Williams, the newest Redbird, makes his debut tonight at Bush in front of baseball's greatest fans. His teammates hope to welcome Woody in the sea of red with some stellar defensive play and timely hitting. They take on the Florida Marlins next on WB11. Warm night at Bush and Woody surveys the situation. He makes his first start for the Cardinals tonight after some solid years with Toronto and San Diego. After the doubleheader split last night, Marlins in the cards game three of the weekend series. And it's in the high 80s. It feels like springtime around here compared to recent days. Bob Carpenter, Al Roboski, Rich Gould joins us in a moment. And Al, we're not going to see a kind of pitcher that's going to go out and strike out 15 guys, but a very serviceable, control, under control kind of a major league veteran. Yeah, here's a veteran guy that, uh, you know, usually is right at the 200 inning mark. He is the kind of guy that I was told that he is a great competitor, and if he doesn't have a pitch, he'll invent it. He'll do whatever it takes to get somebody out. And of course, only Pedro Martinez, more innings per start than Woody Williams last year. A man who has battled back from some serious adversity and almost life-threatening situation last year. Yeah, last season he had a little problem with circuitry in his hand. They developed an, or found an aneurysm around the uh, chest and under his armpit area. Had to have that surgery repaired and he said, you know, now that I've got more circulation flow, I'm a better pitcher and I have a better feel for the baseball. That kind of makes sense if you're if you do have some blood flow in the hand that now all of a sudden you have the ability to throw that baseball. I'm really looking forward to it because there's a guy that you know he was the biggest winner on the San Diego Padres not a very good ball club comes here to baseball city and you're going to find that uh, you know he's got a role with his ball club he's going to enjoy it being here in front of the fans and uh, he's the kind of veteran guy that it usually seems like Dave Duncan could get the most out of. And we hear that he's just an outstanding teammate and a great guy to have in the clubhouse. How about Steve Klein? He joins Rich Gould when we return. Welcome back. Great night for baseball tonight. Cards and Marlins. And Steve Klein joins us. Woody stars tonight. We will get our first look at him. Do you know much about him? Uh, yeah, I saw him pitch in Toronto. And I saw him pitch in San Diego. So, I mean, I, I, I know what he features, you know. And, yeah, I'm glad he's here. Uh, we are, too. And tell me about your first time at Bush Stadium. Uh, all the crowd and everybody trying to, to root you on. Oh, yeah, this crowd's been uh, fantastic so far. You know, every time I come out, they, you know, they just get pumped up and ready to rock and roll for me, you know, they, which, you know, throws me into the game a little bit harder, makes me, you know, want to come out here and compete. Are you able to comb your hair with your left hand? I mean, you pitch so much. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, that's, that's part of the job, you know. I mean, uh, it's like jumping out of an airplane. You, know, you get used to it after a while. <laughs> Steve Klein's done such a great job. We may see him tonight. It's the cards. It is the Florida Marlins. It's coming up tonight. High 80s in St. Louis. It feels like springtime around here, considering how the weather had been lately. And the Cardinals with a good home record of 35 and 23 coming off last night's rather frustrating split against the Marlins of Tony Perez. We'll try to make it two out of three with a fourth game of this series coming up tomorrow. Tony's lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Luis Castillo second in the league in steals with 30. Alice Gonzalez and then the ex-Cardinal John Mabry. Cliff Floyd a scratch because of an Achilles problem. Kevin Millar's in left. Derek Lee at first and Charles Johnson the outstanding catcher. Jeff Abbott at short. Andy Fox the ex-Diamond back at third and A.J. Burnett is the pitcher. Half of our Chrysler Jeep pitching matchup tonight is the man making his Cardinal debut. Woody Williams eight and eight in 23 starts for San Diego. Well he's got 250 major league game plus and over 150 major league starts. He has had a lot of base runners this year. He's given up a lot of long balls but this is a guy that is a great competitor will find a way to retire hitters and I for one think he's a welcome addition to the Cardinal Ball Club. Lifetime record of 58 and 62 for Woody. Here's the Dobbs defense. 
from Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Kerry Robinson in left, J.D. a fixture in right again. Paquette's at third, Pujols at first with McGuire still nursing that sore knee. And Eli will handle Woody Williams tonight. The Marlins are third in the league hitting at 269, behind only the 289 of Colorado, the 277 of the Astros. We should tell you that the Cubs have already lost their game today. Dodgers beat Chicago 3-1, so the Cardinals are seven and a half out and a chance to make it seven by the end of the night. In case you're wondering, the home plate umpire Jerry Davis doing a fine job of waiting till the 7-10 on the stadium clock. Thank you, Jerry. And he, of course, Woody Williams was patiently waiting about a minute, and so were Luis Castillo. Marlins are fifth in runs, tenth in homers, and Woody's first pitch as a Cardinal is right down the middle. 90 degrees at game time tonight. We're underway right on time at 7-10. Woody Williams will be 35 years old in a couple of weeks, and a soft liner caught by Paquette. Always nice to get that first out on just a couple of pitches. Absolutely, and of course, Anytime you are the kind of guy that uh, utilizes your defense and you get the first one right here, a little comeback liner to Marquette. Well, we talked about stellar defense. Didn't take a great play by Craig, but he was positioned perfectly. And here's the other half of their young up the middle tandem, shortstop Alex Gonzalez. A couple of years ago, these guys sort of came up together, Castillo and Gonzalez, after the fire sale. And everybody thought they would become two very good Major League up the middle players, and they have fulfilled most of that promise so far. Alex is the one that made Renteria expendable. 1 0 pitch. High heat. Woody doesn't throw that hard, high 80s, but he's the kind of guy that can slip a fastball by you and make you swing and miss. He's a four pitch control pitcher. He told me he's got a slider, but he won't throw it to right-handers because he doesn't like how flat it is. He'll take his fastball and cut it in on the hands of left-handers. And he's ahead of Gonzalez, one and two. And as Al mentioned earlier, if he needs a pitch in a certain situation, he'll invent one. Now, Al, i got to ask you about that. Wow. How does he do that? There's that breaking ball. That's his curve ball, and it's tapped foul. Actually, that was the description from Mark Grant. One of the <laughs> former pitcher and broadcast for San Diego and meant it in a very complimentary fashion that, you know, if he gets out there and say feels like uh, he's starting to sit on one of his pitches or wants to do something, well, he'll just drop down the angles and try, and try to change his grip a little bit and do whatever it takes. One two pitch breaking ball right back here. I think he, before he had the aneurysm problem, he was through a lot of four seamers, and after that, he had a little better feel of the baseball because the circulatory problem in his hand, and I think now he throws a lot more two-seam fastball, sinker. Here's the one-two delivery again, and some high heat. Julian Tavares beaten by James Baldwin today at Dodger Stadium in that 3-1 L.A. win. The Expos did not score in the first against Roy Oswald at Houston. Toma Oka, the former Red Sox pitcher, is on the mound for Montreal tonight. Here's the 2-2. Breaking ball lined up the middle. That'll drop in front of Jim Edwards. John Mabry, the ex-Cardinal, will be next. John had a tough night here last night, but it's great to see him back in St. Louis. His wife, Ann, and the two little guys are at the ballpark tonight. Yeah, John went to spring training with the Redbirds. Uh, just didn't happen for him. He was 0 for 5 the first week, and then John went to the Marlins literally out of his Cardinal uniform on opening day. Yeah, and it was going to be a nice deal because you get more playing time than he had an injury, but back in the swing of things. John Mabry and the Marlins just made visits to Cincinnati and Milwaukee, and John had a chance to visit with another one of our favorite ex-Cardinals, Mr. Mark Sweeney, who hit a home run for the Brew Crew against the Marlins at Miller Park. Good to see Mark back in the big leagues. He's been struggling with a shoulder problem for the last year and a half. Mabry hits it hard. That will be a double play. Four 
6-3. Pina, Polanco, and Pujols. And the Marlins are gone in the top of the first. Cardinals have a chance to gain a game on the Cubbies tonight and maybe some ground on Houston as well. The big Cardinal bats coming right up. Cardinals are fourth in the league at 267. Tony's Redbirds two games over the 500 mark. Very good at home this year. Southwest Airlines starting lineup starts with Vina. Polanco's at shorts tonight and J.D. Drew's in right. Albert Pujols, the cleanup man with a five-game hitting streak. Edmonds in center and Paquette at third. Eli catching. Kerry Robinson in left hand. Woody Williams, who's not a bad career hitter, over 200 in the number nine hole. Chrysler G pitching matchup. The second half of that is the youngster, A.J. Burnett. Well, he's made uh, 16 previous starts. He's eight and six. This guy has an exceptional young arm. Talked about the fire sale earlier. He and Sanchez, the second game starter last year, were acquired from the Mets for Al Leiter. This guy just doesn't have the experience, but he has a great arm. Dobbs Tyron Auto Centers with the Marlins defense. Only the Phillies and Diamondbacks have made less errors in the National League. But they're without Preston Wilson, they're without Mike Lowell, and they're without Cliff Lloyd. So some interesting names out there at the corners of the infield tonight and in the outfield, including John Mabry with that great arm in right field and a very good catcher in Charles Johnson. Fernando, just short of the 300 mark, his on-base average is 351. Even with a bag at third is Andy Fox. Shallow at first is Derek Lee. And that's low and inside, one ball, one strike. Fernando, whose family originally hails from Cuba, likes the fish from southern Florida, batting 429 against them four games this year. The 1-1. He gets jammed, and that is just beyond the bat. Just foul. Had it been fair, Derek Lee probably would have reached it. And our buddy Phil Isom with a good look at this one down the third first baseline. See where that ball stays. Starts out in fair territory, then go right on the chalk line. And good call by Mark Carlson. His ball clearly was fouled in front of the first base bag. You know, you talk about being in, and I know Morero hits the... Marlins very well, but they have some very, very good arms, and that's not uh, an easy feat, but it takes a little experience. One, two pitch. That was close enough, Fernando thought, so he hacked it off to the left. Astros did not score in the bottom of their first inning against Toma Oka of Montreal. Some finals already from today. Phillies beat the Giants, breaking a nine-game San Francisco winning streak. Atlanta beat Milwaukee. Those were two blowouts. And the Mets beat Arizona 4-2. Here's the next one and a little chopper. Phillies beat the Giants 12-2 at Pac Bell Park. Atlanta 14-2 at Miller Field over Milwaukee. We told you the Cubs lost at L.A. 3-1. Good news for the Cards. They could be seven out at the end of the night. 1-2 delivery. Breaking ball fouled, and I guess if you look at the first two games of the series, the Cardinals are already light years ahead of where they were last night, giving up big innings in the first inning both times out. Now, just unbelievable, the nine runs they scored in the first inning. How consistent he's been. 299 average today, 299 average last season. Great defense. Look at a lot more RBIs. What was it, 12 more RBIs uh -huh. this year. Fernando gets jammed, a little flare, left field line, and making the grab is Kevin Millar. Not really known for his defense. He was going to start in right field tonight. When they scratched Cliff Lloyd, they put Millar over in left and Mabry in right. Interesting call for Wally Bell because you see the third base umpire running out here. And a long run, then the slide. Now, it's still not a catch. You have to reach in and extract that ball out of the glove. And you see him go out there and reaches into the glove, and the ball dropped out. But in, as long as you're reaching in, then they say it's a, it's a legal catch. Here's Polanco with a 13-game hitting streak. Out of play right side. Lasseto over his hitting streak, 18 for 50. 360 clip. 
and it's got him overall at 331, which is ninth best in the National League. Ties Pujols' earlier 13-game hitting streak for the longest of the season. Longest hitting streak in the National League this year, 23 games by Moises Alou. That streak was stopped by the Cardinals. There's a drive to left center. It's hanging up, though, and closing on it, the center fielder, Jeff Abbott. And guys are, you say, not used to playing next to each other. And you saw that Millar was running hard to his left, but then he heard his center fielder call him off and took a little detour to avoid a collision. And here's J.D. with two outs and the bases empty. A.J. Burnett's given up nine homers this year. It's not a bad total at all in over 106 innings. Talked to J.D. before the game today, and I asked him, what's been the biggest thing you've had to deal with coming back now from your rehab right into the fire? And he said, i got to be real careful. I don't overwork myself. He said, i got to be careful. I don't go in the cage and stay too long. And Get, get fatigued and maybe take a little more pounding on that hand than I want to. You know, Al, I guess you come back, you're so eager to get your stroke back and get everything going, it's real tempting to just get in that cage and stay, stay, stay. Breaking ball stays high, and it's two balls, one strike. Well, Bob, the first day he got in the batting cage, you know, when he was given the clearance, you knew that he had lost a stroke. He had to get his timing back. But sure. That sweet swing was still there. Yeah, that first game with the triple. That was a two out triple that drove in a run, led to some more. How much of that have the Cardinals had lately? The answer, not much. Well, it seems like pool holds automatically is better since JD has been back. Uh -huh. Takes a lot of pressure off of people. And so, you know, we've, we've added to our ball club without changing many personnel. 2-2, two, two, and it's out of play down the left field line. Nice crowd gathering tonight. Mark McGuire not in the Cardinal lineup. And a crowd probably in the neighborhood of 38 to 40,000 in the ballpark right now. A.J. Burnett's got the high socks going tonight. Big late kick. And a breaking ball drops in to get J.D. Drew looking. A couple of fly balls and a call third strike. And both pitchers off to a good start. The veteran Williams, the rookie Burnett, and no score after one. On the Cardinals, we welcome Woody Williams. We welcome the Williams family. Mother, father, wife, Kim. It wasn't a shock to you to get traded. You just packed up and came, didn't you, Kim? Tell me where to go. I'm going. You've been here how long? Three hours. About three, about three hours. She gets off the plane. She gets behind. She watches Woody. Now, this is a little different than uh, watching a game in San Diego, isn't it? It's a little, actually, it's a little louder. <laughs> it's a little more exciting here. Louder? Yeah. A little more hot and humid? A little more hot and humid, but that's okay. We're from Houston. We're used to it. I'm going to cross in front of you real quick and talk to Dad. Dad, what do you think about this ballpark? I'm sure you've been here before, but all the way from Houston to watch your son pitch, right? Uh, first time I've been here, and it's marvelous. I love the ballpark. Good. Isn't it something to watch your son pitch? I mean, what a thrill that must be. That's amazing. It's a real blessing, and I just enjoyed it so much. It's what the whole family has. Let's introduce the kids real quick. Caden and this is Hannah. Well, we're happy to have you. We're happy to have Woody. We wish him all the best as a card. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Williams family in mass today, guys. Well, how nice is that? Welcome to St. Louis, you Williamses. Glad to have you. I was ha had to laugh, Al. You and I were down in the clubhouse, and Woody was informed by a good buddy of his, Tommy Hutton, who is a broadcaster for the Marlins. They used to be together in Toronto. And Tommy said, Woody, I think they're going to scratch Cliff Floyd tonight because of his Achilles. And Woody pumped his fist and said, yes. <laughs> Pitchers looking for all the advantage they can get. He will not miss pitching against Cliff Floyd tonight. And Cliff had hit two home runs uh, off him in the game uh, earlier this year. So two one pitch and a swing and a miss by Derek Lee after the Kevin Millar pop up. Derek Lee with a six game hitting streak. He's 11 for his last 24. Remember Derek's uncle? Lee Ron Lee. Lee Ron Lee. Played he was a Cardinal. In the 70s. And of course his, his father was a Cardinal farmhand. 2-2 delivery. And a breaking ball. Fouled off the 
shin guard of Marrero. Both of them went over to Japan, had very successful careers over there, and Derek's father, Leon, just uh, uh, end up being one of the first real big scouts of Japanese talent for an American League club. Now the count 2-2. Two, two. When he was a good sip on that fastball, missing away. And the count goes 3-2. They're now scoreless after two in Houston. Expos and the Astros. Houston now only three games back of the Cubs. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him up and away. And Woody Williams gets his first strikeout as a Cardinal. The Cardinal yearbook is here, and it is red hot. Order a subscription to Cardinal Game Day Magazine. This month's cover boy is Matt Morris. You'll receive the 2001 yearbook at a special reduced rate. We've got operators waiting for your call right now at 982-7336. Outstanding publication by the Cardinals. There's Mr. Momentum, Matty Mo, Matt Morris. 982-7336, the area coach 314. Order Cardinal Game Day Magazine, and you'll get the Cardinal 01 yearbook at a great, great price. Bob, how about the job that Matty Morris did yesterday? And same thing for Alan, uh, Andy Bennis. Right. You know, after disastrous first innings, he really settled down and saved the team. That could have been an ugly doubleheader if Matt Morris goes three or four innings in that game after giving up five in the first. And, and those are things that is part of the maturity can't teach those things you know it's either you you let your emotions get away with you but you know you give up five runs in the first innings you would be amazed to see that line mm -hmm. seven innings nine hits five runs one walk seven strikeouts and you know what he got the victory there's a drive on a breaking ball foul Matt Morris with that win 13 and seven two more than Kyle and his ERA a very good 3.32 now Daryl Kyle with all due respect, should have much better record than 11 and 7. His ZRA is under 3 at 2.97. Cardinals have not supported Daryl hardly at all in a lot of his starts this year. Yeah, Daryl has a much, much better ERA this year than when he won 20 a year yeah. ago. Now the count goes full on Charles Johnson, all star caliber catcher, good offensive player. Back with the Marlins where he started his big league career after a few detours. And he rams one up the gap in right center. Edmonds and Drew to retrieve it. J.D. will pick it up. And it's a two-out stand-up double by the Marlin catcher. Their second hit. Now, you know, Charles Johnson also has a clause in his big contract that if they don't get their stadium situation settled, he can leave as a free agent. Right. And he's having a terrific year. You really go back to the last year and a half. He's hit nearly 50 home runs, hit 300, and we all know he's gold glove caliber back behind the plate. Jeff Abbott will be next with a two-out RBI opportunity. Jeff Abbott getting a call-up and a chance to play some with Preston Wilson on the DL with a badly sprained left thumb suffered a month ago. Woody misses low and away ball one. We also have Cliff Floyd with a bat Achilles on the bench tonight. Mike Lowell, their usual third baseman, a man who has battled cancer in his past and with we'll, a quad problem, and he is available, I guess, to pinch hit. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Very interesting. Breaking you know, ball in there. Mike Lowell and Eli Marrero went to the same high school. There's also a, a third member of their 19-player team, baseball team, hmm. that had cancer. Two of them testicular and, and one the thyroid that Eli had. Interesting. Two balls, one strike. Now Eli getting his strength back. And with Mike Matheny not catching a whole lot lately, Marrero's done a pretty good job. Well, he had a great game yesterday. And played one of the games in outfield. We just have to find a way to utilize him on a more frequent basis. Well, with Ray Langford gone, there's another spot to be had. Kerry Robinson gets some time in left field tonight. Mark McGuire not in the lineup, so that has a chain reaction with poo holes at first and then some other guys moving around. Frank Paquette gets a start at third base tonight. 
And we probably won't see Mark this weekend, maybe Tuesday in Montreal, huh? Well, yeah, I think that's probably a safe bet, but you didn't hear it from us. <laughs> Two balls, one strike, and now with the runner at second, Woody and Eli, brand new teammates, going through a sequence of signs. It takes them a while to get things together. Dave Duncan discussing the situation with Tony La Russa. Woody Williams, the kind of guy who's never a big winner, but he always keeps you in the game. In fact, his last few years have been his best. 9 and 14 for Toronto in 97, 10 and 8 the following year, 12 and 12 for the Padres two years ago, and then 10 and 8 last year. 2 1 pitch. That's a strike. Looked like he took a little bit off that fastball, maybe sunk it a bit, and he evens the count 2 2. Well, see, that's part of it. And, and you know, trying to get together with Eli, he knows himself better, so Eli's just a guide and let Eli kind of follow his lead. 2 2 the count. Runner at second, two outs, top of the second. And a breaking ball. Had him reaching. Woody's there to get it. Hill underhand to Pujols. And the first two innings of Woody Williams' Cardinal career, very, very good. Pujols, Edmonds, and Paquette coming up. We're scoreless after one and a half at Bush. What's on tap from Bud Light? Great taste. Won't fill you up. Never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Al and I tomorrow, Cardinals and the Fish. We're on at one. First pitch at 110. Dustin Hermanson, nine and eight for the cards. And one of the better young pitchers in baseball, Ryan Dempster, 12 and nine for the Marlins. They have some young talent, don't they? Yes, yes they do. That fire, sale, that fire sale let them stockpile a lot of it, Al. Yeah, I mean, people don't, you know, people don't realize the job that Dave Dombrowski did and the talent he re acquired in return. There's a fastball that misses outside ball one. Last night's starter, the second game, Sanchez and Burnett, tonight's starter, came for Al Leiter. Yeah. You know, Brad Penny. From Texas. Pujols drives it to center. Hits it well. Heading for the grass. Home run. One Cardinals. Albert with his 26th of the year. He increases his Cardinal rookie record and St. Louis leads 1-0. How about that? And every home run just continues his rookie record or adds to it. What a joy he's been. And what a lift for a ball club. There's a lot of season left to play, but you get him swinging the bat like he did earlier in the season. You get J.D. You get McGuire, who's had 11 home runs since the All-Star break. But the guy we really need to get going is the man at the plate right now. That ball way up the hill. That'll probably be about 430 feet. He crushed it. He knew it. And so did Jeff Abbott after a couple of steps toward that wall. Albert says, I'm going to look at that bat and see what I did to that thing. I'm going to hold this thing for a while. Here's Edmonds. One and one to Jim, who's hit 14. And you get... You get Jim Edmonds swinging the bat, you know, still 100 points lower than what he was in mid-May. Renteria is picking up the pace. Fastball up and in ball two. There's still plenty of time to put a charge into things. Renteria has really shown good signs since the uh, since the train deadline. I know Almost. you've been impressed with some of the work he's done with Mitchell Page so yeah. far. Edmonds a little tapper, stays in the batter's box. That means it's foul. Sometimes the uh, same message, but a different messenger. There's Mitch. You know, Mike Eastler was did an outstanding job, very popular with the players, but he did it one way, and Mitch has a little more of a stronger personality, maybe yells at guys. And <laughs> Jim Edmonds told me a story that one of the first meetings that Mitchell Page conducted was very apparent to him. He was talking about some of the things he had done. He had watched a week's worth of tape before he even came into that meeting and all of a sudden Jimmy goes, wait a minute, this guy is really he's done his he's homework. The, yeah, he's done his homework and he's making points and and saying things, you know, not just blindly after one game. You know, he saw and observed things. Now it's full on Edmonds, three and two.
see what we're talking about at 331 average a year ago with those 32 home runs, 77 RBIs. Got off to a great start, but his right shoulder. Good at bat. A.J. Burnett wanted no part of Jim Edmonds on a 3-2 pitch. He threw him a little changeup up and away. Watch the reaction of Pujols on the swing, Al. He knew this baby was gone. Yeah, you, you know, he, you hit him, and even though it's only your 26 at the major league level, <laughs> when you hit a ball that far, you have a pretty good feel how it jumps off the bat, the way it follow through your swing. Remember, too, he's doing it straight away center. Albert Pujols on his way to a 100 RBI rookie season. Why would anybody throw Craig Paquette a strike on the first pitch? He almost always swings, and he takes that pitch away into right field for a base hit. Three consecutive base runners are reached, but it all started with Albert Pujols, and he knew he put a charge into this one. You know, that's about as much as he's going to admire it and does the right thing. And I'll watch that uh, majestic straightaway blast to center field, but put your head down and kind of yeah, keep on watching, but run around the bases. Sure. Two on, nobody out. Now the Cardinals have a chance for a big inning. Eli is up there. Kerry Robinson next. And the Marlin infield looking for something here. Eli shows no signs of laying a bunt down. And he takes a breaking ball in the dirt. And as Al mentioned earlier, Eli enjoying Florida pitching, a 545 batting average. Did they say 354 no, feet? 454. 454. I had it. Wow. The longest this year. That was almost to the top of the hill. So it's 402 to the wall. He hit it nearly to the top of the wall, or top of the hill. So that's about 50-some feet of uh, green, green grass out there. 453 on the home run by Pujols. That is some blast. It's almost up to the top of the grass. Yeah, almost right to there. the batter's eye club. <laughs> Eli. Dog with our pitcher. You see it right all right there, it looked like it went off the, the front of the uh, batter's eye. Wow, what a blast. That's why the extra footage, it hit off the batter's eye and came back onto the grass. There's the base hit by Morero. Here comes Edmonds. Over the front is Paquette. Eli digging for two. He is safe on a great throw by Mabry. And then Marrero manages to stay on the base, drives in his 17th, increases his hitting streak, and the Cardinals lead 2-0. And now it could be a very big inning. Boy, that was a great throw by Mabry, and just the umpire, second base umpire, Chris Guccione stayed right with the play, going into the corner, so Mabry would has to get it off, cuts it off. He comes up gunning. You know, he has great running speed, Marrero, He's got this play in front of him. Hesitated slightly. He made sure that the runner ahead of him had gone past second base. And see, there you see where the umpire just stayed right with the ball. Not Terry Robinson's been hit by a pitch. And the bases are loaded for Woody Williams. That's okay. Well, as I mentioned earlier, Woody Williams is not a bad hitter. He has nine hits and four RBIs this year. And he's a 250, uh, I'm sorry, a 206 career batter with a home run and 19 batted in. The only guy really upset about this is Gary Robinson, Al. He wanted that RBI <laughs> opportunity. Yeah, he did, but uh, especially after last night where he drove in a couple and had three hits in, in a game. We've got trivia for you from the SunTrup Automotive family. There's Woody. What is his given name? Well, according to the Padres media guide, it's Woody. <laughs> they don't list his true name. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I found it. Nice to meet his wife, Kim, with the Rich Gould interview earlier. Daughter, Hannah. Son, Caden. 
I think they called him Cady, right? C A D E. Infield in, bases loaded. Woody Williams first at bat, breaking ball misses. Woody is Gregory Scott. Put some wood on it, Woody. Now a step off by the pitcher. We've had a home run, a walk, a single, a double, a hit batter. Nobody out in this inning. Cardinals lead 2-0. It could be a whole lot more shortly. Fastball on the corner. That evens the count. No score in Houston still. Expos did not score in the top of the third. If you just joined us. Cubs were beaten 3-1 by the Dodgers in L.A. today. The Cardinals are seven and a half games out. Woody Williams, 19 career runs batted in. He went after the breaking ball, couldn't stop his swing. Not really fair. 95 mile an hour fastball, 77 mile an hour curveball. <laughs> Burnett's got an interesting curveball. He calls it a spike because he takes a fingertip and digs it into the ball. It's a little extra torque on that thing. And that was a spike. It was also a strike. Here's the one two. Got him on a pitch away. Every base occupied. So no advancement by the batter. And that's the first out. AJ also has two nipple rings too. Oh he does. Yeah. So a spike. Did you visit the clubhouse earlier. No I, I uh, stayed behind the curtain. You know oh. when I heard that. Okay. Okay. Yep, AJ is one of those guys marching not only to the beat of a different drummer, but quite possibly the entire marching band. I told that to Mike James, and all of a sudden James was excited to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> Mike James may be back soon. Here's Fernando with one out, bases loaded. How sweet would a base hit be right here? Anything but a double play ball. There's a drive. A little bit foul. That was a, an off-speed pitch, and uh, Fernando was well out ahead of it. That might have cleared the bases. Uh, it probably would have carried it the first. Bases and just hooks foul, and Derek Lee was more rooting than, than knowing it. Yeah. Well, off the bat of the left hander, that thing had some hook on it. Cardinals have good speed out there. Paquette at third. The faster Marrero at second and the even faster Robinson at first. No balls, one strike. Out of play. And a lot of times, us play by play announcers and our analysts, we kick that baseball term around called timely hitting. And what that means is timing is everything. Getting your hits at opportune times, sometimes with two outs, almost always with men on base to drive in big runs and what a tone this could set early for the Cardinals and for their pitcher Woody Williams. There's the 0-2 to Fernando upstairs looked like they wanted to jam him and that thing got away from AJ way up top or go up the ladder try to get him chase a ball that would either produce the strikeout or pop up on the infield. Bases loaded one out bottom two Cardinals lead by two. A one two delivery breaking ball two third coming home for one and that's all they'll get Paquette going after Charles Johnson evidently Andy Fox thought that ball was hit too slowly to go for a five four three so they get the force Rick Paquette try and do whatever he could so a little slicer here see Andy Fox from his knee comes home watch Paquette tries to hook the slide and tries to you know, up and Charles Johnson, so he could not complete the double play. I mean, that's just recognized as good, clean, hard baseball. Bases loaded, two outs. And a good man to have at the plate in this situation. Polanco, a bona fide contact hitter. First pitch to Polanco, breaking ball low. Interesting defense here by the Marlins with two outs. Charles Johnson hopping all over the place trying to locate the ball. Bob, you talk about timely hitting. This is an example of it right now. Yeah. It's a momentum shifter. Let's go back to last place. He gets around, but he didn't know where it's at. 
And Polanco, Polanco trying to chase Charles back to the screen. It's in the dugout. It's in the dugout. Go over there. It's standing three inches from home plate. How about that? The 1-0. He's a thinking man out there, isn't he? But it's this situation right here. If Polanco comes through, then you get probably two runs. You add to the one run you've got this inning, or the two runs you've got this inning, and you've got a 4-0 lead. If you do not, it's kind of that momentum shifter, right. and they feel pretty good about themselves. Big hanging breaking ball stays high. You saw the infield defense. The reason we show you that, Polanco loves to go to the right side. So as we pan over, look how far off the line Derek Lee is. Totally unconcerned with the runner. He's trying to keep the ball out of right field. The 2 1 coming. High fly ball, left field. It'll play for Kevin Millar. Cardinals could have used that one out or two outs ago, but they settle for two. The inning started with a long home run by Albert Pujols, 453 feet. Marrero drove a run in with a double. 2 0 Cardinals. Another run the bases day tomorrow, brought to you by the Gateway Arch. And all fans 15 and under will be allowed to run the bases after the Cardinal game. And you get a free tram ride ticket courtesy of the Gateway Arch. That'll be tomorrow. Cardinals and the Marlins. AutoZone Division standings NL Central. Cubs lose 3-1 at L.A. today. So the Astros, who are scoreless after three at home, only three back. Cardinals could be seven out at the end of this night. Top of the third, Andy Fox leads off. We saw Andy a couple of years ago with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Andy takes a good running fastball from Woody Williams for strike one. Chance to play here with Lowell out with that groin quad injury. And a foul off to the left. He and Floyd are both available to pinch hit, but they're reluctant to do so because you would have to replace them if they reach base with right. a with a base runner. Pitcher next and then Luis Castillo. We have some very interesting characters with us tonight. This could be a whole new career for you Al. Groups of women at a bachelorette party coming to the ballpark to see Al Roboski. They I didn't know they were coming. You're the only one that knew that they were coming. Well Lori Leupold who is one of our favorite gals. She is the assistant to Mr. Bill Lannessy over at KPLR. Her daughter, Leslie, is up here with Brooke and all the wedding party, and uh, they're having their bachelorette party tonight. Later, when they turn the lights on back there, we'll be able to see them a little better, but we've got, the, we've got all the names. There's a broken bat ground ball. Vina charges. Vina picks. He throws out, and that's how the top of the third gets underway. Speaking of KPLR, WB11 News at 9 after the game. Jeff Bernthal and Melanie Moon, Dan Issa with sports, and Gary Scythe with weather. That's WB11 News at 9 right after the Cards and the Marlins tonight. Brooke Cannell is the bride-to-be, and she says hi to her groom-to-be, Gordon Mallory. Brian Lucas is here who claims, well, we're not going to claim, we're not going to say what he says he is for this group. Be careful with He these. is their male escort tonight. Yeah, and there's what, a what, fastball what, 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 for this Male escort at a I, bachelorette party. Yeah, what's Brian doing here anyway? Maybe he's the designated driver later. A.J. Burnett, four for 31 this year. The 0-1 from Woody. It's a strike. Leslie Leupold, Lori's daughter, is the maid of honor. Jody Rosenthal is here. Lisa Pyrick, Kelly Greer. Macy Burris, who says hi to Dylan and Blake. Angie Haggerty is here, wishing her dad a happy birthday. That is not strike three. And Judy Cannell rounds out the wedding party, having a big time at the ballpark tonight. Good to have you all with us, girls. Whoa. There's another bride to be. We've got competition in the ballpark tonight. <laughs> Look at this. Hey. Where are we going? <laughs> They're wondering how they can get upstairs to see Al Roboski. And a high pop foul. Looks like Paquette wants it. He'll call the catcher off Marrero, as he should. And Woody Williams is off to a good start. He's got two outs in the third as he faces Luis Castillo now. Let's take you inside the numbers with Bank of America. 
and some of the Florida Marlins offensive numbers this is a team with a very low payroll they're ahead of the Cardinals in hitting they're ahead of the Cardinals in runs they're 17 home runs behind then they steal bases a little more than the Redbirds do so they're getting a lot out of their young talent right now Al with one of baseball's lowest payrolls yeah since the break they're batting first in the National League and, and they have a very good pitching. I mean they play like champions at home they're tied for the league lead and wins at home on the road it's a struggle and yep. you know and, that, and that's not unusual for a young team that sometimes uh, have to learn how to handle themselves in the big cities. They're 23 and 36 on the road. Cardinals are 20 and 30. They're 32 and 18 at home. One of the best records in the league. Cardinals are 35 and 23. They're closer to Atlanta than the Cardinals are to the Mets, or rather to the Cubs. A 1-1 delivery coming to Luis Castillo, who lined out to Paquette first time. Perfect on the outside corner. Look like Woody turned that ball over a little bit. He invented that pitch. Woody Einstein Williams on the mound for the Cardinals tonight. He's coming up with all kinds of inventions and mathematical formulas to befuddle these Marlins. There's his breaking ball low and inside ball two. Expos did not score in the top of the fourth at Houston. Pirates and the Rockies are underway. One nothing Pittsburgh after two and a half. We'll send you some of the American League finals from today. Seattle won again. Their 80th win of the year. They are 80 and 50. Jeez. They beat Cleveland at Jacobs Field 8 to 5. Oakland won at Detroit 10 to 1. They're in the wild card race. Toronto at home beat Baltimore 2 to 1. And the Yankees at home beat Anaheim 5 4. Luis Castillo hacks one off to the left out of play. Would you say Seattle's record is 80 and 30? And, 30. and they've won four in a row now. They are unbelievable. And disappointed they couldn't add more players at the, at the trading <laughs> deadline. Yeah. Who do they want? Who do they need? They've been in the market for a power hitting outfielder possibly to play left field. But every time they throw Stan Javier out there he gets a big hit for him. There's a little chopper. Paquette cuts it off. Quick throw. That's a one two three. Woody's first. And we go bottom of the third. It'll be true. The home run hitting Pujols and Edmonds. Cardinals and Woody lead by two. This portion of Cardinal baseball on WB11 is brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. And by Hyundai dealers where driving is believing. Stop by this week and test drive one at your local Hyundai dealer. Cardinal baseball on KPLR. St. Louis, WB11, flagship station of the Cardinal Television Network. Bob Carpenter, Al Raboski, Rich Gould, our Bud Sports crew, Tom Mee and Tom McLaughlin at the controls tonight. And a breaking ball low and inside ball one to J.D. Drew, our graphics guru. Doug Stanton is hard at work tonight, giving you some outstanding informative numbers. Lindsey Davendale in the tape room doing a bang up job as always with our great replays. Jeff Amos, our crack audio guy, who somehow manages to keep Al and I happy. Two and zero to Drew. Me happy. I've never once. You never complain about audio. Anything. I'm the one who's always talking to the audio. Three and zero. Big dog, of course. Already one mention tonight on our center field camera. Now it's two. And the rest of our great guys. There's the big fella. His tally light's not on, so he can relax for the moment. Here's a 3-0 pitch. J.D. takes a high strike. As part of this Cardinal baseball telecast right now is that 2 nothing lead. You got it, partner. Here's the 3-1. J.D. takes a walk. And if you're wondering why your colors at home are so vivid and everything is so clear, it's Rich Keeper and video who shades those cameras and makes everything jump out of that screen at you. And here's Albert who jumped one out of the ballpark 453 feet to straightaway center field last time up. And they got full extension on that ball that was down right into yeah. center field up against the batter's eye club. Yeah look that's close and he's out. J.D. Drew picked off. J.D. didn't dive back in he stepped back in and Derek Lee tagged him out. We 
It's shown him many times how JD kind of with that start, he had the false start to a second and tried to jump back for the bag and quick feet of AJ Burnett. You know, Al, I'm pretty sure the throw beat him, but I'm not sure Derek Lee ever tagged him right off the bat. It looked like Lee kind of swiped at him and swung that glove between the knees of JD and then he might have been back to the bag. But sometimes when the throw beats you, the umpire punches you out. I don't think he tagged him till he was back on the back. Unless he got him on the knee, but it didn't look like it. But you see where the umpire's at. He's blinded for that. He just sees the tag being applied. Can't see if there's contact. Albert goes fishing upstairs, strike two. And we saw Dave McCade, the first base coach, didn't say anything. We saw Tony kind of make a point to say something to J.D. And I'm sure one of the things is, is you know, where are you going? Yeah. Nobody out. We're up by two. Big power hitters. There's a tomahawk fly ball to center, but he got it off the end of the bat. And Abbott puts it away for the second out. That'll leave it up to Jim Edmonds here in the Cardinal third. Astros in their fourth did not score. They're having a pretty good pitching matchup right now between Roy Oswald and Toma Oka in Enron Field. Top of the fifth, no score in Houston. Big ball game over in the American League Central. Minnesota with a half game lead over Cleveland going into the day. Leading the Royals three to one. Cleveland lost their game so the Twins are right now up by a game in the AL Central. First pitch to Edmonds who walked his first time is low ball one. Yankees won their ball game again. They still lead the Red Sox by five. Boston won the first of a day-night doubleheader against Texas. And they're leading 4-2 in the nightcap. When's the bat of Jim Edmonds going to start exploding? In his defense, he's been banged up a lot. I know that shoulder's been bothering him, Al. He's been unable to really uncork that bat on a lot of occasions over the last month or so. Yeah, Bob, it's, I think you could tell that on many of his fly balls and he's hit a few in this homestand that were just falling short where he gets to a certain point and then he just can't come through with his swing because that shoulder right shoulder doesn't allow him to do so that's a nasty pitch locking him up on the inside corner and the counts even 2-2 two -two. I think when sometimes when Jim's in this situation and he's hurting he's hoping to maybe get one pitch per at bat that he can put a good swing on and if it doesn't work out on that pitch he's got a problem 2 to the count bases empty two outs after the pickoff and that's way outside and with Paquette coming up next Edmonds will be happy to take a two out pass and Jim's told me too that there are times when you know he goes to start a swing he'll get to a certain point and then it just grabs him and it pulls him off the pitch yeah three two tough enough Al to be successful at this level when you're 100 percent healthy Absolutely. when you're 60 or 70 percent the job is 10 times tougher and there was a point uh, before we went on the Chicago road trip they wanted to give a cortisone injection into the shoulder and he said no I don't want to do that because then I can't play for three days yeah. three two Edmonds takes the walk nice at bat by Jimmy Two walks in this inning. Now the pickoff looms large because of instead of two on one out, it's a man at first two outs and a chance for Craig Paquette. First pitch swinging last time, got a base hit to right that set the Cardinals up for the bases loaded situation. I've always said, you know, we in an old axiom in baseball is a first ball fastball hitter. And you know what the best pitch to throw to a first ball fastball hitter is? Fastball. Fast yeah, but just don't make it. Yeah, don't you know, make, don't make it over the heart of the plate. Don't make it over the heart of the plate. Just make it good enough that he reads fastball and he's gonna, and you've got almost an instant strike. Or if maybe you have a good enough slider, and a lot of pitchers don't anymore, throwing that slider that breaks a little bit away from him. That time he takes the ball on the first pitch. Craig's biggest thing is. I think one of the things he does early in the count because a lot of times guys are trying to get ahead of him and when they, even they throw that breaking ball he has a tendency to chase breaking balls late 
and when i mean chase you chase someone that's out of the strike zone a j burnett working up a good dripping sweat on a ninety degree saturday evening in st louis one oh pitch a high pitch is fouled and the counts even one one a j burnett originally drafted by the mets in ninety five came with jesus sanchez brandon villafuerte and a player to be named later who turned out to be Cesar Crespo in a March 98 deal for Al Leiter and Ralph Millard. One of those deal and Dave Dombrowski deals. Here's the 1 1 delivery. It's a bad breaking ball that he totally lost his release point on. A.J. Burnett, 24 years of age, born in. Uh, North Little Rock, Arkansas, lives down in the Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale area now. And one of the young building blocks on that pitching staff for the Marlins. 2-1. The There's a shot. Base hit. Paquette two for two. Stopping at second is Edmonds. And now you really wince when you think about that pickoff with nobody out. Two on, two out now. Probably cost a run at this point, but... You never know. You don't get the same sequence. But a ball that was up, out of the plate, got on his toes, hit a line drive. A lot of guys swing underneath that. But you hit it, stay up on top of it, hit it on the line, you can get some line drives even with the pitch up in your eyes. It's up to Eli. Double the run home last time. Can he do it again? Guerrero, 17 runs batted in. Eli with a four game hitting streak. He's now six for his last 11. This ball moves him off the plate. A lot of room down both lines. And the center fielder Jeff Abbott shades Marrero a bit toward left center. So there's a big gap out in right center. As we look at it from our robotic camera atop the screen behind home plate. There's a soft breaking ball outside ball two. Tony West's camera. Tony West at the joystick controlling that robotic camera tonight. I hate to play him in Nintendo. 2-0. And it's popped up by Eli. Twilight time. Jeff Abbott looking up into that strange sky. And he pulls it down. Last two innings, the Cardinals have had a runner picked off, and they've stranded five. Edmonds leaning back, and the Cardinals settle for a 2-0 lead. Into the fourth inning we go, 2-0 Cardinals. Happy to be joined by a good Cardinals fan, Quinn Snyder. How I see you at the ballpark all the yeah. time. You love this sport. When I can get down here, I love the comic. No. So. Quinn, is, Quinn has been in the news lately. We're not going to ask him about that contract. Yikes! I want to know about football. We know about basketball. Right. I want to know about football. And if you're going to root for Gary Pinkland, the guys. Is oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're uh, certainly upset about Farmer's injury, yeah. and, uh, and Coach Pinkland's terrific. They're going to they're going to do a great job, and, and uh, we're there when we're in town. The new schedule released about a month ago. Uh, everybody in St. Louis, naturally, are looking forward to two games right. in town this year. So this is uh, this is Mizzou East. Yeah, it's good to be in St. Louis. Hopefully we uh, we didn't have as much success in St. Louis as we'd like last year. We lost to Illinois in overtime. And, uh, got another crack at it this year and obviously played St. Louis U here as well. That was a heck of a game, that overtime game, wasn't it? It was a great game. It was a great game. we got to keep Kareem on the floor. It would be more successful. I don't know what you can or can't tell us about recruits, but uh, uh, give us what you can, sir. Uh, nothing specifically. Okay. Just that uh, it's funny with recruiting for us, there's a perception that we're out signing all these great players and I think we uh, I think I, I love who we have but uh, we've yet to sign some you know top top guys I, I think we have guys that are uh, that are hungry what happened there? Got a little action yeah, Quinn Snyder's got the play-by-play -play, folks <laughs> we're excited about it let me say that we appreciate the visit good luck to the Tigers this year both uh, basketball wise and hopefully Gary Pinkle's watching tonight I sure I'm rooting for that guy He's, gonna, he's terrific. It's, uh, I grew up in Seattle and watched him coach at the University of Washington, so I've been a fan of his for a long time. Appreciate it, Quinn. Thanks so much, Bob. Back upstairs. One of the outstanding young coaches in college athletics, Quinn Snyder, at the helm of our Tigers over in Columbia. And a leadoff double for Alex Gonzalez, Al, on a pitch up. Yeah, he plugged the gap out there, or 
down into the corner and it went off the wall. Uh, Robinson was playing him over a little bit straight away to left center. And here's John Mabry. His job is to advance that runner. Woody's going to work him away trying to prevent him from doing that. John is a guy who swings hard, has a big long swing, and isn't always the best guy to have up in this situation. But we saw in spring training that he added power to his game. Yes, he did. Where before he was more of a single hitter. There's a drive to left field, but right there is Kerry Robinson, and that will freeze the runner at second base. Mabry hit the ball right on the button, but in a good spot for the Cardinals to keep that runner at second with one out now. Yeah, John hit that ball very hard. And I think Morero's just going to go out and talk to him now. It's two hard hit balls. You got away with one of them. You didn't the first one. And Mabry hit the ball just as hard his first time up. A 4 6 3 1 hopper right at Vina. So here's Kevin Millar who popped up to short his first time up. Cardinals lead 2 0. Expos have been batting for a while on the top of the fifth inning at Houston. They're in a scoreless battle right there. Woody throws a fastball high. Important for Woody Williams to keep this a 2 0 game right now. Cardinals have the bottom of their order due up in the bottom of the fourth. It'll be a while before the big guns are back up there. The dangerous hitter right here and the key. And a breaking ball fouled. Kevin Millar with a five game hitting streak, six for his last 20. We're going to tell you how to find the answer to a baseball question we're going to throw at you in a moment from Edward Jones. And uh, you'll have to do that online. I'll tell you about that in a second. Kevin's hit 343 since the All-Star break. One ball, one strike. He's always been a guy with a lot of offensive potential. Not a great outfielder, but he made a very fine play to take a hit away from Fernando Vina in the bottom of the first. On a sliding catch down the line. 1-1 one, one pitch from Williams. Jammed him. Fly ball left field. That is trouble. It is a foul ball, fortunately, for the Cardinals. That thing had some funny spin on it coming off the bat. And here's one for you. Do you know who said... I didn't really say everything I said and it ain't over till it's over. Yes I do. Well I think we should go to edwardjones.com slash quote quiz play the Edward Jones quote quiz contest. You can win tickets to an upcoming Cardinal game or autographed memorabilia from Stan the Man Inc. How about that. Kevin Millar with a count of one ball and two strikes. Cardinals lead 2 0. Top of the fourth, pickoff play, throw late, and Vina sort of slipping over the bag into the runner. One, you're trying to pick him off, but at the very least, you're trying to keep him close at second base in case a base hit, he can't get a, come all the way around to score. Alex Gonzalez digging in to keep Vina from going down and knocking him off the bag. One ball and two strikes. Did he go? Did he go? No, Ooh. says Mark Carlson. And that is ball two. I'm sure he heard a lot from the bench, the Cardinal bench. Lex is at bat like Sheffield. Edgar Renteria does that from his Marlin days. And a borderline call that goes against the Cardinals. Now the count 2-2. Two, two. He got him on a high fastball. There's a 2,000 to one strike for you. Last year, that's ball three. This year, it is strike three. Well, remember the breaking ball off the plate, try to get him to go, and then he comes right back inside, up and in, tying him up. So oh, this is what Woody brings to you. He brings you that experience. A breaking ball doesn't get him to offer at it. Then you come right back inside and you finish it off with a pitch that he can't handle, and you got to call third strike. Derek Lee is next. Struck out swinging first time up. Woody has two K's now. This would be a big spot. The number five Marlin hitter, Charles Johnson on deck. If you can get this man in the inning, 
with the exception of one hitter you've worked through the really dangerous part of their batting order but that would be OK to have Charles leading off in the fifth. Very got the game winning hit in game two last night a home run in the ninth. Shoots one off to the right side that will even the count one on one. Boy, how frustrating I guess both clubs should are saying they should have won that double header. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well the Marlins nine first inning runs in two games and they don't win the first one and almost lose the second one. And Cardinals win the first one down for nothing battle back to tie the game. And you think at home you've got the advantage against this club but especially you play well at home and they play poorly on the road. One one pitch fly ball right center. J.D. is stalking it. He's got it. And the Marlins are done in the fourth. They strand their second runner. They've had three hits, but they've never been able to put hits together. Woody working well, leading to nothing. Lots of breaking Cardinal news lately, and you can always be the first to know. Log on to STLCardinals.com, the official source for Cardinal news. STLCardinals.com. Connect with it. It's a great website. Uh, no tips on how to snooze at the ballpark, though. But a lot of ways to have fun downtown at Bush Stadium and the surrounding entertainment areas. Ticket information, the latest transactions. Kerry Robinson swing puts it out of play, and the bottom of the fourth inning is underway. Woody Williams next, and then Fernando Vina. Bob, we might want to take a look at uh, A.J. Burnett and watch him. Last couple uh, pitches. He's kind of bent over and almost like feeling like a leg pain. And lifts that uh, right leg back up, whether he tweaks something behind the knee. We've heard that word recently. Tweaked. tweaked. Yes, Mark yeah. McGuire's knee tweaked. Maybe hamstring. And it's up and away, ball one. Gary had a real nice night. Game one, he was three for five with. Uh, Stole a couple bases and drove in two runs. He's a weapon. I like the way Al he goes to left field. Not always up there trying to pull the ball. There are so many stubborn young hitters in baseball these days who think they have to pull everything. And Carey is not one of those guys. He has performed very well for the Cardinals. His batting average 307. Here's the one two delivery. I think it's interesting. Gary came up. He's now playing in his 71st game. Stubby Clapp, 17 at bats in 16 games, but he's been with the ball club for quite a while now. These guys are sticking around. I like it when the young guys come up and make a name for themselves and stay on the ball club. Well, Gary definitely has done so. And there you see Stubby. Stubby not nearly the playing time, but a positive influence as well. And here's a 3 2. Gary bounces it be close waiting for it Gonzalez he got rid of it quickly and if Alex hadn't gotten that ball out of his glove very fast Kerry Robinson beats it out well you knew that Gonzalez recognized the speed of Kerry Robinson almost made a fatal mistake watch as he backs up but look at how he quickly with his feet and all in one action spins with his feet and throws down from the side to try and get it to first as quick as possible right there is how he got him out Woody is next. Struck out swinging first time up. Doesn't use any batting gloves. Lays off a strike on the inside corner. By the way Williams is performing here and the way Andy Bennis has pitched the last two times out in the starting rotation. Be a nice problem for the Cardinals. Six starters for five jobs. You can never have too much. And it's one and two to the Cardinal pitcher with Fernando Vina on deck here, bottom of the fourth. Montreal, after being out for a while, did not score in the top of the fifth. Astros didn't score bottom of the fifth. <laughs> Expos didn't score top of the sixth. They are screaming along in Houston. No score after five and a half in a game that started at the same time this one did. There are two innings ahead of us. 2 2 pitch a little bit up and in and the count goes full. 
Nice crowd on hand tonight, 40,000 plus. On this, the Cardinals' 109th game of the year. Did he go? No, and he takes the walk. A.J. Burnett with his fourth walk of the night. When he threw his no-hitter May 12th, nine. he walked nine. And the Marlins guys told us he did not have anything resembling a curveball that night. He threw 119 pitches, and, or 129 pitches. 121 of them were fastballs, and it was all over the place. And so he walked a bunch of guys, but nobody could hit it either. And he throws a no-hitter, ironically against San Diego, the night after Woody Williams had pitched against the Marlins. And he's walked four tonight now, and here's Fernando. He gets jammed and pops an easy one out to center. Jeff Abbott waiting for that can of corn, and he's got it for the second out. And it'll be Polanco with two outs. In your Bob Carpenter scorebook, is there a can of corn uh, reference? <laughs> you know what? The, the next time we go to press to print up more scorebooks, I'm going to put a glossary of baseball cliches inside the back cover. Will that be fun? That would be fun. We'll have to compile our list, Al, as we go along. You've just given me yeah. a brilliant a new brilliant idea. A brilliant idea, and I'll take, a, I'll take only a small percent. And a ground ball this short. That's it for the inning. I had an original idea a couple of years ago. Really? It died of loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> We've played four. Two nothing, Cardinals. August 4th, 1971, number 200 for Bob Gibson. Here at Bush Stadium, he beat the Giants 7-2, and that's brought to you by Schnucks, one of our great St. Louis family-owned businesses, and that's Schnucks' date in baseball history. There's, There's a little guy definitely dressing down for tonight's game. Bob Gibson, Lou Brock, no red chandies. Uh, sure. Stan, hopefully Stan has gone to Cooperstown for this weekend. Dave Winfield, Kirby Puckett. And induction ceremonies. I know what Bob Casey will be saying tomorrow when he introduces his favorite Minnesota twin. He'll say Kirby Puckett. <laughs> he said he introduced Kirby like that. The first time he played in the game as a Minnesota twin. Kirby got a hit, scored a run, and on his way past, 62 pitches so far for Woody, roughly two to one strike, so that's pretty good. Kirby Puckett ran by Bob Casey, who announces from down on the field behind the screen there, and said, don't ever stop introducing me like that. I love it. That became a staple of Twins baseball up there in Minnesota for a long, long time. I'm sure Bob thought when Kirby ran by on the first half, oh, no, what, a, what kind of complaint am I going to get from this prima donna? Not Kirby Puckett. Not at all. Swing and a miss, strike two. There's a, a little bit of controversy in the minds of some people who claim that Kirby Puckett does not have Hall of Fame numbers. But when you consider his career was cut short by the eye injury and the wonderful ambassador he was for the game, uh, I've got no problem at all with Kirby Puckett being in the Hall of Fame. I, I think it's not, not being in the Hall of Fame. I think the problem is his first foul. Yeah. And there's a strikeout. Charles Johnson punched out by Mark Carlson on the appeal. There have been several times that the call has gone against the pitcher, but not this time. And I think Charles Johnson did come through a lot more than the other two. <laughs> Went and said hello to the umpires tonight. Jerry Davis, a St. Louis guy. And a breaking ball is in there to Jeff Abbott, the center fielder. Got to know Wally Bell a little, little bit over a few years, last few years. There's a Woody breaking ball, and he misses low and away. One ball, one strike. What's going on in Houston? Man, they are in the bottom of the seventh now. Still scoreless. Toma Oka and Roy Oswald at Enron Field. How about that? And a base hit with one out by Jeff Abbott here in the top of the fifth. A game that started when we did 
And we've got a 2 nothing game, not exactly a home run fest. And they are two and a half innings ahead of us down in Houston at a band box of a ballpark. And uh, make a little friendly wager that uh, this game will be over before this. <laughs> this one before that? Yeah. All right, I'll take that wager. We're going to play eight and a half, and they're going to go extra. <laughs> Could happen. Got a friend over there, huh? Yeah, I've got a. Is that a grasshopper on my TV over here? Yes. It's about an inch and a half long, feeling his way around, enjoying our Bud Sports production tonight. One ball, one strike. Hey, that beats the radio booth. They have a lot of spiders over there. We have a few that visit here, that visit us over here. Yeah. 0 oh, and 1 to Andy Fox, who bounced out Davina first time up. Would the double play ball be sweet here with the pitcher on deck? Make him lead off next inning. There's a pitch up high. There's Mr. Jim Jackson who keeps Jack and Mike and Joe and all of us in line when we're over on the radio side. I'll be with Mike on the road trip while Al and Dan work some TV in Montreal and New York. One ball, one strike. Jim Jackson is the best. And there's a change up. He slowed down the bat of Andy Fox and he fouled it off to the left side. One ball, two strikes. Now the crowd just kind of enjoying a 2 nothing Cardinal lead right here, hoping that those squandered opportunities in the second and third innings do not come back to haunt. This crowd really filled in. Wonderful crowd for Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Got him on a breaking ball, looking. A nasty hammer on the inside corner. And strikeout number four for Woody Williams and his second of this inning. Uh, he's got an awful good breaking ball going right here. And look at how he just freezes the hitter at almost a 12 to 6. That Two will outs. get a lot of good hitters, won't it? Yes, it will. A.J. Burnett, the pitcher. And he popped up first time up. Well, Ray Langford hit a home run last night for San Diego. Good for Ray. Yeah. Blow it away. And we hope that both players benefit from the change of scenery. Ray's a West Coast guy from L.A., so San Diego will be nice and convenient for him and Yolanda and their family. We're going to miss Yolanda as well. She was one of the real leaders of the Cardinal Wives in terms of raising money in the community, donating money for different causes, and uh, despite the fact that Ray hasn't been that great with the bat in the last year or two, Ray Langford is the kind of guy that wore the Cardinal uniform with class and with honor, and we wish him nothing but well. Absolutely. Still the all-time Bush Stadium home run leader. Was he third on the all-time home run list? Mm -hmm. And you start thinking about it, you know, when the Cardinals have been over, around over 110 years, or right around 110 years, Ray Langford's in that top 10 in many good offensive categories. Right. There's a strike to him, too. And anybody the that tries to say he was a problem at the clubhouse doesn't know Ray Langford or right. his teammates, because there's several of them that... Uh, really expressed how much they enjoyed playing with him and how much they're going to miss him. And I'm sure the Cardinal fans will treat him with respect he's due. Yeah, I hope he gets a great ovation the first time he's back with the Padres. Three and two now. That'll give the runner a chance to be moving. And it's good for the ball club and for Ray Langford. You know, change of scenery. And we get another pitcher. We hope he has four or five great years in San Diego. Runner goes. 3-2 pitch, and the top of the fifth is over. Woody strikes out the side with numbers 3, 4, and 5. Marlins have stranded three runners. We are halfway through at Bush Stadium. Cardinals lead 2-0, and the big guns drew Pujols and Edmonds coming up after some good heat by Woody. This portion of Cardinal Baseball on WB11 is brought to you by the President Casino. Now electrifying the landing. And by Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order it. Beautiful Saturday night sunset here at the ballpark in St. Louis. 
And a young Cardinal fan right in front of Dad waiting for some fifth inning fireworks. She's out there in the bleachers waiting for Drew Pujols or Edmonds to hit one out where she's sitting. And after the ball game tomorrow, Sylvester Stallone goes behind Russian battle lines to rescue his friend and the best Rambo of them all. Don't miss Rambo 3. Not Rambo. Not Rambo 2. Now, it's Rambo, Rambo 3 tomorrow after Now, which Al one was that? That's not the one up in Seattle. No, this is that where was he two, goes. Right? He that goes was behind Rich Russian lines. Behind Russian lines. Get his buddy. Huh? I'll have to watch that one. Bottom of the fifth, J.D. Drew 0 for 1 with a walk. Rambo 3 tomorrow on WVLF. WV11 News at 9 for our St. Louis audience after this ball game tonight. Drew Pujols and Edmonds for the Cardinals. Bottom of the fifth. 2-0 pitch coming. J.D. Beeson right field. And that's the first Cardinal hit since the third. A clean single to right. Don't tell me that Mark McGuire bobblehead days are now coming. Two of them. Not one, but two. First is Sunday, September 16th. Cardinals Astros, first 20,000 fans. Kids. Kids 15 and under. Kids. Then on Tuesday, the 18th, first 20,000 fans, 16 and over. And let me just tell you something, folks. Ichiro, they had his up in Seattle. Oh, it was a Before, mile. before, you know, they had that... Uh, bobblehead night for each of those. They had bids on eBay at over four hundred dollars. Wow. I know the earlier ones they were like forty dollars for Matheny and Edmonds. So what do you think they're gonna be for McGuire? And All got, I know. We got two of them. One for the kids and two days later on the 18th of September one for the adults. Yeah, right? Brought to you by Sports Service and Ice Mountain. All I know Al is will somebody please call me and buy my closet full of Beanie Babies? Now that they're passe, <laughs> that was the big thing a couple of years ago, and now it's the bobblehead dolls. One ball, one strike. And these bobblehead dolls are guaranteed to drive off of their back knee and hit the ball out of the ballpark. One and one to Albert Pujols, one for two with a solo homer. J.D. back in hands first this time. He got picked off last time after leading off the third with a walk. So mark down September 16th. Kids 15 and under September 18th, 16 and over for the Mark McGuire bobblehead downs. Now it's one and two to Pujols who flied to center last time. Astros still batting bottom of the seventh, no score with Montreal. Up and in, and another final from the American League. Boston sweeps a day-night doubleheader from the Rangers, winning the nightcap 6-2. The 2-2 deliver. Pujols with a high fly to right under it, John Mabry. It's coming down, trust me. John's got it for the first down. It'll bring up Edmonds. Got a nice note from John Uffelman, the senior vice president, branch manager of First Union Securities in Carbondale. He says he's been bringing his sons to the Cardinal games for the past 35 years, Mike, David, and Scott. They're enjoying Cardinal action in section 150 down behind home plate tonight. John and his buddies grew up in Chester, Illinois, great Cardinal country. Chester. We got some buddies from Chester. We got, we'll see them in Cincinnati in a couple weeks. We got weeks our moment. buddies from Chester. You better believe it. Yeah. They always make the drive over to Cincinnati on Interstate 64. Through Louisville on up. Those guys drive? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a charter type thing. <laughs> Here's Edmonds. <laughs> Two walks for Jimmy, and it's up and in ball one. We're right back with you tomorrow, 1 o'clock. First pitch, 110. Dustin Hermanson for the Cardinals. Ryan Dempster for the Marlins. Uh, 
very close again. This time he went in sliding. Diving back to back. Yeah, we win this game. Win tomorrow and put a little pressure on those cubbies out on the West Coast. Boy, Al, it would be nice to leave on that road trip. Four games over 500, wouldn't it? Close again, J.D. back. Looks like J.D. just not reacting real quickly once, to the move of A.J. Burnett. Yeah, once again, his first step was to towards second and very nearly picked off in leaning. And just that little false step just usually is enough to get yourself picked off. He's lengthened his lead now. He's running. Pitches a changeup. Throw is short. And J.D. Drew is safe. That was a very good play by Alex Gonzalez, the shortstop, on a one-hopper from Charles Johnson, who's thrown out 43% of opposing base runners this year. And J.D.'s now 70% success ratio, his seventh steal. Got a good jump off the pitcher and short hop throw, and there's what you're talking about. Gonzalez, not only does he catch the ball, but puts that left leg out there, tries to stop the slide of J.D., and apply the tag after he catches it. Well, I wince every time I see fingers going first into that bag with an infielder's knee or some spikes there. Well, I go back to a statement that Luke Brock told me, and he said, you know, you can only slide hands first if those middle infielders allow you to do so. Right. They can put it put a hurt on you. Edmonds with a hit could put the Cardinals up 3 nothing, and there's a the pitch outside. Change up. 3 and 1. Last time on 3 and 2, A.J. Burnett threw Jim Edmonds a change up and walked him. He's put Jim on twice via the walk. And then Paquette, who's batting after Edmonds, is 2 for 2 with a pair of base hits. Cardinals lead 2 nothing. Edmonds hacks it high and out of play to the left side. And I know uh, if, if the argument people say they get to the bag quicker, why don't you see Olympic sprinters dive <laughs> for the tape? I just think there are a lot of things that can happen when you go in head first, hands first, and about 90% of them are bad. Three balls, two strikes to Edmonds. Runner at second, one out. Somehow stopped that bat from going around, and Jim Edmonds has his third walk of the night. Fifth walk by A.J. Burnett. Jimmy, like he wanted to swing, but then he was trying to stop his swing and get out of the way of the inside pitch. They did eventually have an appeal to third base umpire and he said no swing. And Jimmy running a circuitous route to first base and he's there with one out and a big spot for Craig Paquette. Craig has single to right. He's single to left center and his batting average has jumped up to 270 now. There he is hacking at the first pitch and a breaking ball for a strike. To bat in second inning. Line that ball out there. Then he comes back, hits another base hit over the shortstop's head. So two for two, and he has been getting more playing time and earning it. Out of play, upper deck, and the count goes 0 2. Craig Paquette last year hit 245 for the Cardinals. His career batting average coming into this season, 239 with Oakland, the Royals, the Mets, and the Cards. So he's overachieving this year. Well, I see him 319 with runners in scoring position. He got the, his 10th home run last night to tie the second game 4-4. There's a double play ball to the bag. It goes Andy Fox across the diamond for the 5-3 twin killing. And the Cardinals are gone in the fifth. Astros are still batting in the seventh at home scoreless. Cardinals have held the Marlins scoreless. We played five at Bush, two nothing St. Louis. August 14th, Albert will take you to the movies. It'll be the Reds in town, AMC Theaters, player action photo night. All fans 15 and under with a paid admission. Get a wonderful action photo featuring our rookie sensation. And at the bottom of the photo, a coupon good for a free small popcorn courtesy of AMC Theaters. It'll be Tuesday, August 14th, Cards Reds. I think Albert would be in a starring role this year. His name all over the marquee. Best rookie in the National League and in all of baseball, really. Oh, man. 
We're talking about Cool Holtz and AMC and Popcorn. I go in AMC because they got the fresh. They pop their own. Yeah. I love going to the movies and eating popcorn. Little, not a lot of butter, just a little. No butter for me. Astros just got two in the seventh. That's bad news. They could be two and a half back of the Cubs at the end of the night. A tapper over the mound, top tier, and uh, no play there for Polanco. Perfectly placed and with the speed of Cal, uh, Luis Castillo. No chance for the Cardinals to make a play at all there. Castillo just one of the best in the business of getting infield hits. And he's a running threat when he gets on. It's at 338 since the All-Star break. Hey, Al, did you ever see Beauty and the Beast? Oh, every time I look in the mirror with my wife. Oh, okay. Because uh, Rich Gould is next with the Golden Girls. <laughs> Sorry, Rich. Had to do it. That's okay. I mean, these girls really are better looking than you said they were. I I'm the beauty there. The no, I'm kidding. You girls are from St. Charles. Is that right? What's your name? Katie. And? Good. The Golden Girls are here. It's University of Mizzou Day today. We've already talked to Quinn Snyder. Here's what we're going to do. Carpenter and Al Rabaski want you guys to go stand by them. Is that all right? Can we take the whole squad? <laughs> we'll be right up. We're on our way. Come on, guys. Oh, brother. Who <laughs> holes will catch it? <laughs> oh, now you're all worried. Huh? Now I'm worried. <laughs> oh. Not worried, just intimidated. Hey, I know all these girls' great-great-grandmothers. Yeah, that's right. Golden Girls, a great tradition at the University of Missouri. They represent the U with a lot of pride and a lot of class. And here's John Mabry, one on one out. Cardinals got Mabes to hit into a double play ball in the top of the first. John has hit the ball hard twice. That was a one hopper at Vina. He lined hard to carry Robinson in the fourth. We got the Golden Girls coming up. We got a bachelorette party here. Goodness gracious. Typical. Runner went and stopped, and it's fouled off to the left. 2-0 Cardinal lead. Rich Gould has been known to bring some riffraff up to the booth with him, <laughs> but that will not be the case tonight. <laughs> John Mabry, one of our favorite guys. How many guys come to St. Louis and end up making their home and stay here even if they're traded away. Yeah. And a little chopper to the right, strike two. Yeah, I was talking to T.J. Matthews tonight. T.J., of course, back with the Cardinals. He and his lovely wife, Kelly. They never did sell their house over in Illinois, so they just moved right back in. Over by the family area, over by Columbia. You know, sometimes that creates a problem because they'll rent them out to a, to a player. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming back. Yeah, I'm coming back. Get out. Great to see TJ back with the Cardinals, back in the big leagues. And to see a big smile on his face when we were welcome him back. There he is, number 37. 33 was his number with the Cardinals the first time around, and he said he's negotiating with Jeff Murphy, the bullpen catcher, <laughs> to get number 33 back, but so far, no deal. 0-2 pitch, and Mabry fouls it off his foot. A <laughs> broken bat, now a broken foot. Yikes. I mean, it really hurts his running speed, too. Yeah, John is a lightning-quick runner, isn't he? Yeah. We always used to kid him about how slow he was. But the thing about John Mabry, Al, a very good, intelligent base runner. He knows how to go to first and third when he can. And he's a guy who will not embarrass himself on the bases despite a lack of speed. He's very good at going first to third on a double. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. So far, no movement off first by Luis Castillo. 0-2. Cardinals think he might be doing something. And there are a lot of managers. Tony La Russa is one of them who believe that 0-2 is a good running count. Sure. A lot of times a guy is concentration, just trying to hit a spot, trying not to make too good of a pitch. Everybody kind of uh, relaxes a little bit. A lot of the old uh, thinking is a skewed now. There's a fastball up and away. Not a bad 0-2 pitch. Catch 
pitcher asked for a pitch in a zone. So he's trying to trick uh, Mabry, thinking the ball's going to be inside, and then he goes sets up away. One ball and two strikes to John Mabry. Go back away again. And Mabry reaches out, strokes it out of play. Well, Rich Gould wasn't kidding. The Golden Girls are here. How many of them are there, Rich? Too many to count, evidently. All right, Rich, you can leave now. Well, we've had Team Fredbird up here this year. Now we have the Golden Girls from Mizzou. Come on, there's more room. One ball, two strikes. Mabry, ground ball. Pujols is short for one. The relay. Got him both. A three, six, three, double play. The Golden Girls bring us some luck. They have to stay the rest of the night. And we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Two nothing Cardinals. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Maggie is a journalism major to be one of the Golden Girls. So Maggie, will you read our production credit, please? Of course. Cardinal Baseball is a production of Bud Sports and ex an exclusive presentation of Fox Sports Net. I th th you got your degree. How about this? You like Al Raboski, our pom pom guy. Pom pom guy. Pom pom guy. And leading pom -pom off the guy. top of the. I've been called a lot worse. At the bottom of the sixth is Eli Morrell. Now we're going to talk to Maggie and the gals here for a second. Maggie, we see you guys at the football games, the basketball games, but what kind of other things do you guys do to represent the university? Well, actually, this year we are um, looking into a, a project for Habitat for Humanity. We're looking into fundraising to building a house for the community, so we thought that would be something positive that we could do for the city of Columbia. That's great. See? Off the court, off the field, there's a lot of good things the Golden Girls do. You guys, uh, are you guys all upperclassmen or upperclass women in this case? No, we do have uh, Got some rookies? five freshmen, yes. That's cool. Sophomores and juniors. And a fly ball by Eli back into the seats. You're watching Cardinal Baseball on KPLR-TV. St. Louis, WB11, the flagship station of our Cardinal Network. Quinn Snyder's here. Mike Alden, the athletic director, is here from Columbia. And the Golden Girls, Rich Gould brought up to the booth for us. Marrero, Robinson, and Woody Williams for the Cardinals in the bottom of the sixth. The 2-2 two -two to Eli. And a swing and a foul. Maggie, thanks for joining us. Good, Thank you very good, much. Good luck in the journalism Thank school you. there in Columbia. Thank you. Hey, I'll see you in a couple innings. Okay, Al. Al may have to escort the I've girls got, back. I've got to talk and find out what, what goes on with, you know, Nikki's going to be now. She's a uh, sophomore. Journalism major. Is that what she is? <laughs> now that Missouri has one of the great journalism schools in uh, the United States of America. A lot of great graduates from there. A lot of guys and gals who are doing great things in our business from Mizzou. 3-2, it's up and in, and Eli draws the walk. Walk number six by A.J. Burnett. The Bomberito Automotive Group has a batting average National League leaders over the last week and a half. Cardinals are right in there with a team batting average, Al, of almost 290. Well, you know, they have pitched extremely well the last 15 games, but unfortunately, they're only 8-7. and seven. I guess you get back to that lack of timely hitting, because yeah. if we're third there in that 286 average, we're not getting those hits at the right time. Timing is everything. Here's Kerry Robinson. This is a big spot for the Cardinals in the sixth to add a run or two. Now that the Astros ended up putting four runs on the board in the seventh, they bat bottom eight, leading Montreal 4 nothing. You're going to lose your bet, Al, unless the Expos come up with four, and I hope they do. Well, you know what? Put pressure on the Cubs. You're going, to owe, me, got, you're going to owe me a lemonade during brunch tomorrow before our game. I didn't say it was going to... You were not going to wear it. <laughs> Gary Robinson tonight hit by a pitch and a ground ball. He's 0 for 1. Woody Williams on deck. He's given the Cardinals six shutout innings. There's ball two way outside. No activity yet in the Florida bullpen, but that could be imminent. And just as I say that, the phone has rung down there. 
And uh, Coach Breeden is answering that phone. Well, maybe not. He thought he heard the phone. He went running toward it. No, and now speaking. Joe Breeden is on the line. Kind of we'll see who staff. they want. No, you got to be careful with these pitch counts. 2-0 pitch. Robinson fouls it out of play. A former Cardinal is down there, young Braden Looper. And it looks like the left-hander Armando Almanza. Another former Cardinal farmhand. Right. The Renteria trade. Pablo Osuna, Almanza, and Looper. Hall of Famer Tony Perez at the helm now. He's done a good job with the Marlins. Remember, he took the job on an interim basis at first, and it was actually Jim Leland kind of talked him into it and said, hey, look like you're having some fun. I think about it. Quit telling them you're only going to take this for a couple of weeks till they find a replacement. You do it. Right. And hopefully Tony will be around for a long time. He was robbed of his first opportunity in Cincinnati. Yeah. yeah. That was a bad situation. One year ago this weekend, Tony Perez was being inducted into the Hall of Fame. That was long overdue, too. You got that right. One of the greatest RBI men ever. 2 1 pitch. Carey takes it. I think the thing that hurt Tony Perez, Al, I mean, so many guys from that ball club, Pete Rose, Joe Morgan, Johnny Bench, the Big Red Machine, he was the one who was easily forgotten because of the other guys. And he shouldn't have been. Well, anybody that played against him didn't forget him because he was probably the best RBI machine uh, in that era. Runner goes. Great jump. And Robinson jets one to center. This ball is caught by Jeff Abbott. And all the way back to first, via the second base bag is Eli Marrero. Eli was around second when that ball was caught. Nice running catch, but boy, that was as far as we've seen Kerry Robinson hit a ball. This is even further than the one that he hit out. That was down the line. Yeah. So put a charge in it and look at Marrero with that great running speed, but under control, he had to reverse the steps, go back and tag the second base bag and come all the way back. And it sounds like a minor thing, Al, but there have been runners who have forgotten to touch the bag on their way back. Well, I've seen guys, you know, round the bag and just kind of cut the corner and run back to this quickest route to first base. Yeah, that may work that on the sandlot, but not here. No. Woody Williams up there again. Woody 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk. to bunt pulls back this is a great opportunity for Woody to lay a bunt down get a runner in scoring position with two outs and let Fernando Vina or Polanco or both take a swipe of driving in a third run of this game well, Woody hadn't been around to really see how imaginative Tony La Russa can be with his pitchers hit runner going yep. swing The second great throw Mabry has made tonight. Well, you just have to feel that there was some kind of uh, hesitation from Marrero. He's running with a pitch, but he must have get deeped or something. Because on a one hopper there, he was not really around the bag, and he was thrown out by plenty. The throw was a little bit right. So you know that there was some play around second base where he hesitates. Either trying to deke him, yep. and they did a good job right there restarts the engines and at that point he's thrown out yeah it looked like that cost him a couple of steps and that's why over and over and over again we talk about this on the air and i've heard other announcers talking about it too nobody seems to want to pick up their coach anymore all the runners are looking over their shoulders to see what's going on if you look to third and keep running your coach will let you know there's a fly ball by Vina. This is trouble. It's in the corner, and it's caught by Mabry up against the wall. What a night John Mabry's having on defense. Stranded is Woody Williams. Cardinals lose the runner at third. We've played six. It stays 2-0. Into the seventh inning we go. Cardinals lead 2-0. It could have been more. But that was a John Mabry inning. A great throw and a great catch to end the inning. 
and a great wife, Ann Mabry. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Why, it's so nice to see Ann. And, of course, we miss John here. He's doing great in Florida, though, isn't he? He's doing all right. He made the adjustment well. We like it down there. It's a nice young man. What do you think about the hubby's throw? It's what he does for a living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he, he did it well. And how about the catch? Same answer? Today, he's better do that. <laughs> It's just what he does for a living. You're still living in St. Louis, aren't you? We are. We are. We have two children. We settled here until baseball's over. Good. And you get to visit with John, I guess, whenever he comes to town. That's that's great. He can hang out at home, visit. No, actually, we're down there. We came oh. home. We came home for. They went on a road okay. trip. We came home for some doctor's appointments. I think we stay in town until this road trip ended. It's so good to see you. We wish you all the best, and of course, all our best to John. Thanks. Good to see you guys. Too. Thank you, and back upstairs. That's what he does for a living. <laughs> Isn't that great? Thank you, Ann. What a lovely girl she is. Yeah, one of the neat things. They were like college or high school sweethearts. Yes, they were. And They've known each other a long, big, long time. Big league uh, life didn't spoil him. One ball, one strike. Seventh inning underway. Kevin Millar leads off for the Marlins. Cardinals lead 2 0. It's been that way since the second. Quite a ball game. Woody Williams. Quite a job. Seventh inning of work. He's given the Marlins no runs on five hits. Five strikeouts. Has he walked the batter? No, sir. And a drive for a base hit to left. Woody Williams, a pitch count still under 100. 95 pitches to be exact. But you know what? Marla Russa, you know, uneasy with this game because the Cardinals should have probably two or three extra runs. And playing this game a little too casual on the base pass. You can enter the AutoZone Sweet Deal sweepstakes. Stop by any St. Louis area AutoZone store. Enter to win four tickets to the best seat in the house, the broadcast suite right behind us here at Bush Stadium. It's your chance to have the Cardinals experience of a lifetime. Stop by an AutoZone store today and enter. Come up and hang out with former Cardinal Al Raboski. Dave Duncan to the mound and back to the dugout. Big strikeout. Derek Lee and he gets Millar. Charles Johnson, he went around. Boy, look at that breaking ball right there, freezing. Double double plays. This one early off the, John, the bat of John Mabry. And this one was real brilliant. 3 6 3. That's probably the toughest one for a first baseman. Yeah, they got him by plenty. Yeah. There's a swing and a miss and a high pitch to Derek Lee. Boy, that's a great pitch right there. You know, any anytime you get a hitter, especially somebody that's as lanky, big, tall, and lanky as, as Derek Lee. He's going to want to get his arms extended. So if you can go up and in and tie him up, it's just there's no fluidity in the swing. Here's the 0-1. It's a fastball that misses away. That evens the count. One ball, one strike. Astros scoreless in the bottom of the eighth. But they lead 4-0 as the Expos now bat in the top of the ninth at Enron Field. They're about to be two and a half games back of the Cubs. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball of beauty. A real beauty for strike two. You can tell, like you said, he knows how to pitch, knows how to change speeds. And a real tough battler. Jammed him and a little pop-up, but it's back and out of play right below us. And it bounces up into the loge boxes from the field boxes. Woody and Eli, a pretty good tandem as the Cardinal battery tonight. One ball, two strikes. Marrero sets up away. Breaking ball away, base hit. Derek Lee reached out and hit that ball hard to left field. And the plot thickens here in the top of the seventh. Back with another breaking ball. This time he looked like he had a better idea on it. Luther Hackman is warming up in the bullpen. Tony looks like he's ready to come out. Just wave to the bullpen to see if things are ready out there. They have announced Charles Johnson. 
Al, not a bad pitch, but maybe not quite out far enough where Eli wanted that thing. Yeah, I think that was the case in point that, uh, you know, after coming inside, you know, he got one, he fooled him on one breaking ball, tried to go back there again, and you know, it was a little bit of an arc, and he adjusted to it. Al, the crowd has already started. You're going to hear some kind of ovation for Woody Williams. Enjoy. on his way into the game to take over for Woody Williams who goes six plus no walks five strikeouts couple of double plays seven hits and a definite W opportunity out there if the Cardinal bullpen can do the job the rest of the way now they made sure that there's no way that this could not be a successful outing for him the only chance he has is a no decision or a win so Woody Williams has made his debut. I know he's not happy with it. See him shaking his head, but all things considered, there were adrenaline rush of first time he wore the uniform, and he's done a good job. Now it's up to the bullpen to preserve the victory. He leaves with the Cardinals ahead 2-0. It's up to the bullpen when we come back to Bush. Tough spot for Luther Heckman, who makes his 12th Cardinal appearance. A strike. And now Roboski with Mike Timlin out. Some of the roles have changed a bit down in that Cardinal bullpen. Absolutely. And now all of a sudden, these tough batters, Luther Hackman's going to face him. He's appearing for the 12th time. He lost a game in Houston. You see the numbers for him. He induced a ground ball double play last night. Game two. Outside ball one. Got a real good arm. And these guys probably not that familiar with him limited time with Colorado. He did start one game for the Cardinals last year. Had elbow surgery. Started the season on the disabled list. Outside target from Eli. It's a hard one. Off the corner. Two and one. It appeared to be off the plate. Crowd didn't like the call. And it goes to two and one to Charles Johnson. This is a dangerous juncture of this game right now. Cardinals lead two nothing. Hanging on by a thread here. Play it second, save, a lower throw would have had the runner. Vina had to reach up for that ball just a bit before he could pull down the glove. You see that hand, the right hand extended, you drop that, you spin and throw, and they almost get the runner. A little bit high throw, that's what you were talking about. Very, very close play. A little lower, and they've got it. Two one pitch. There's some good gas. How about that running fastball? 93 miles an hour. He had some good movement to it. And the count's even 2-2. 0 for a ground ball right at somebody here. Luther Hackman throwing the ball about six miles an hour harder than Woody Williams' best heater. And the 2-2 to Charles Johnson, who's driven in 65 runs. They jammed him. Pop up. Eli over to get it. He is there. What a big out. Now the double play gets you out of the inning. From our robotic camera, we'll have a good close look at this one. Right here he just jams him. He gets that pop up. They're coming right at you. That's going Tony West. You know, Bob, we showed that Luther has an 0-1 record. He lost a game in Houston. That was that tough game where Cardinals got behind really early and then they battled back. Right. Got the, you know, tied the game. And he had pitched two innings when the game was, you know, when we were losing. And he was a change pitcher when he came back and the score was tied. Immediately gave up the, the tie and, and the Cardinals lose the game. But since that time, you know, he has, like, really bowed his neck. And you might remember, Al, during that inning, he was victimized by a bad throw from Vina over to third trying to force out a runner. On a ground ball to second base, it would actually have been a tag play because one of those runs he gave up was unearned, and that led to that eight-run Houston fifth inning 
in that 17-11 loss. So Luther, with a little luck and a little better support, could have done a whole lot better. Yeah, but when a pitching coach and a manager sit there and go, oh, well, I can pitch him, you know, when we're behind, but I can't pitch him when we're tied or with a lead. Yeah. But since that time, he has really changed that impression and has pitched some of his best baseball. In fairness to Luther, and, and I remember pointing this out that evening, I think that was his first time he had pitched in 10 days. And that obviously has a bearing also. One ball, one strike to Jeff Abbott. One for two with a single. And the 1-1 one -one delivery is a breaking ball driven to center. Edmonds has a ways to go. Turns one way, the other. He's got it over the shoulder. And both runners have to go back. Another gem by Jim Edmonds on a ball that was slicing to the right center field gap on it. Well, there's no one better than Jimmy on this type of ball where almost just doing a limbo looking back and catching a ball over the shoulder. He is so good and he got to be limber, don't you? I mean, this one, the only difference in this and some of the ones earlier is that he didn't leave his feet and die for it. He was able to just keep on running for a spot, look back over, and make that play. After that long drive, Dave Duncan comes out and wants to talk about Andy Fox, the hitter. And let's go back to the last at bat, trying to get together on signs, and you see Eli taking charge, told him to step off, Hey, step off, take a breather, relax a little bit, and then we'll reset the signs. Because people don't realize it, but when you're standing on that set position, you, you start tensing up the longer you wait. Andy Fox 0 for 2 tonight. And a little number in front of the plate. Heckman's got it. So does Pujols. And the Cardinals are out of the inning. How about that for a job of scoreless relief? Marlins strand a couple. They've left five. Seventh inning stretch time at Bush. Cardinals by two. You can have a great time at the ballpark if you're the Southwest Airlines family of the game. Here's how you do it. Send us a postcard with your name, address, and number. The Southwest Airlines family of the game, PO 771192. St. Louis zip is 63177. Good luck. You'll have a great time. Fred Bird, prizes, all kinds of fun if you're the Southwest Airlines family of the game. Armando Alamanza, as Al mentioned, a former Cardinal farmhand, in for the fish here in the seventh. He's done a real nice job in his 38 appearances. One win and two decisions, 3.16 ERA. Opponents are batting 178. 34 strikeouts and 31 in the third innings and only 19 hits. He did allow one of two inherited runners to score in last night's first game. You know, I remember Cardinal said, ah, he'll probably get to the big leagues. He's a, you know, a left-hander. They all get there. <laughs> and the first time we saw him throwing 94, 95 miles an hour, I said, nobody told us that. So that was a great trade that Dombrowski pulled off for yeah. the Marlins, getting Pablo Osuna, who's out for the year with wrist surgery, but... He's got a chance to be a real special. And then Looper and Amanza, two very steady setup men in the bullpen. Bottom seven. How about some insurance here? Montreal got a run in the top of the ninth, but they lose at Houston four to one. So the Astros are two and a half games behind the Cubs. And they've got ten games left with Chicago. Absolutely. That's why we just win our share. And it's going to be very, very interesting. You know, I think in the last... 10 days, the Cubs and Astros played seven times. Including the last four. The last four in Chicago. So, only thing the Cardinals got to do is just hang in there. And both of them got some you know, some serious things. This, you know, we need to get uh, Polanco to extend his hitting streak to 14 games. But think about this. You know, Houston's got three young starters in their rotation. You know, so they're going to feel the pressure going down the stretch. They got a great offense. You got you got like Tavares for the Cubs. He's on. This is his first full season in the rotation. Right. They got some guys that have never felt the pressure of going down the stretch in a close pennant race. 0-2. Polanco gets jammed and pops it short left field. It's got a chance to drop. 
It does. They say it's a trap by Kevin Millar as Chris Guccione, the second base umpire, gets right out there and becomes part of the play. Well, stands his sitting streak to 14 games. That's tops on the club this season. And this probably should have been an out. And to say he trapped it. Gonzalez going out, the shortstop looking the corner, and Millard coming in, and yeah, he did bounce, and a great call by the umpire who hustled out there, because that's tough to see until you see this kind of camera work. Good job by our crew, but give uh, Guccione some hustle out there, because he's right there to make the call, sees it bounce right there, and then up into the glove. Now, there are 30 frames a second to that video. We advanced it one frame at a time for you so you could see that ball on the ground before it got up into the glove of Kevin Millar. Great job by our Bud Sports crew on that one. Here's J.D. Drew with a walk and a base hit tonight. Facing a lefty for the first time and he takes a strike. So Polanco a 14 game streak 19 hits over 54 at bats now and the longest streak by a Cardinal this year. 352 average. What did you say ninth in the in the league and hitting now came in at 331 and I wouldn't be surprised that when the baseball writers get together for their big dinner in February if that little guy is not named the Cardinals 2001 MVP he will definitely be one of the recipients of one of the major awards he will take some hardware home JD Drew 328. JD said, you're talking about JD's season, you know, without the missing 35 games with a broken hand. Yeah, where would he be right? Where would his numbers be? He'd be around, he'd be approaching 30 homers, Al, and he'd probably have his RBIs in the 75 to 80 range by now. You know, it's obviously been a breakout season for him. 0 2. Target away. Look at first and the pitch. And he turned one over, did the left hander. That had a screwball look to it as it went down and in to the left handed batter. One ball, two strikes. Another final in the American League. Minnesota goes a game and a half up on Cleveland. They beat Kansas City 6 to 2 now. The 1 2. Inside again. White Sox at home beat Tampa Bay 8 to 6. We gave you the other finals earlier, so all the American League games are over now on this Saturday night, August 4th. Two, two, instead over to first and back easily for the Lanco. Cardinals have had their leadoff man on base or beyond five times in seven innings tonight. I say beyond because Pujols homer was a leadoff shot in the second. 2-2. Two -two. Haven't done a whole lot of running with Polanco in terms of straight stealing. But he's a good base runner who's good on the hit and run. Probably better with the bat in that situation with Vina on base. But he has stolen six bases in eight attempts. Eric Lee plays off the bag with him a bit. Steps in front of him now. 2-2 pitch. Drew strikes out on a high one. 92 mile an hour fastball. And that's the first out here at the bottom of the seventh. Interesting how some of the defenses are with holding a runner on first base. In this case, you see where the first baseman is. Now he's out in front of the bag. Then he'll take a step towards second base, getting the fielding position. And then as the pitch is being made or at the point where the pitcher starts his leg up, but still in a point where he can go to first base, he goes back to the back. Albert Pujols, one for three with a homer. He's got a pretty good power matchup here. Almanza getting some giddy up on that fastball to the tune of 94 miles an hour. Well, see, that's what we were talking about. We thought it was just a soft toss and left-hander, <laughs> and then we saw him throw and said, wow. You know, yeah, he was going to get to the big leagues, and he can dominate the big leagues. He throws the breaking ball, and the count's even. 
Albert Pujols now updating his totals. 26 homers, a Cardinal rookie record. 79 RBIs. He's got 50-some games left to get 21 RBIs for 100. Wouldn't that be something? Holes at first base tonight with Mark McGuire unavailable for the weekend. Cardinals have two runs, seven hits. Marlins no runs, seven hits. And a 1-1 coming. A half swing. That one, 94 miles an hour again. This ball up there, you... Wow trying to stop your swing because it's very t difficult to stay on top of. That's the pitch J.D. struck out on. Pitch up there. A little mo movement. Yeah, and then the ball's on top of your bat before you can do anything with it. Uh, it has pop-up or strikeout written all over it. But I think the one thing that so far he has not been able to demonstrate that he can get a breaking ball over. So you can cheat a little bit and get started on the fastball. Albert had a big time rip straight back and went. Ooh, he had a shot at this one. Look at fastball. He got a fastball that's down a little bit and he didn't like the fact that he let it get by. 93 miles an hour. He took a little bit off. <laughs> one mile an hour in his previous 94 heater. He didn't take anything off it. It just went slow. <laughs> Cardinals lead 2-0, bottom of the seventh, one on, one out. And the 1-2 to Albert. There's that breaking ball. It got away, and Polanco went about 30 feet to second and then decided to come on back. You know, that's, that's fine because, you know, you bounce off there, but if you don't think you can get there and you don't really know, you kind of lose sight of it, you can't, you've got to stop and go back. It's sort of the field thing. You, know, you see it gets away, and... Probably from his angle, he didn't really see how far the ball got away because he's looking right into pool holes. And remember, this is a guy that's got one of the better throwing arms in the too. 43% caught stealing coming into this game. Two balls and two strikes. How did Albert reach that thing? Almanza uh, turned one over on him. Well, Bob, that's what you got to do. You look fastball. And, but yet you can adjust to something off speed and get a little piece of it. You aren't trying to put it necessarily in play, but you're trying to keep your bat alive. If you're looking for it, if you're looking for the off speed pitch and it throws a fastball, you're lost. But you can see, just get a little piece of it, recognize it slower, and look like it right off the end of the bat. And still up there for hopefully another mistake. 2 2 pitch. Albert starting to make it a battle now. He looked overmatched early in the at-bat. Now he looks like he's holding his own and getting a piece of a couple of these deliveries by the young left-hander. You know, oftentimes you're told to keep the ball down. But a lot of times you keep the ball down, that's the pitch that's hittable. Yeah, if you but, can throw it 94, up's not bad. Yeah, if you've got a little movement and you can throw it up in the zone, there's very few guys that make a living off that pitch. Dustin Hermanson tomorrow against Ryan Dempster. Alan Rich and I will be right back here on WB11, the Cardinal Network, at 1 o'clock. First pitch at 110. Another very good pitching matchup. Yes, it is. Will the Cardinals be going for three out of four? We hope so. There's the possibility of leaving town four games over the 500 mark. 2-2 Two -two and set another throw over. Armando Almanza. In this game slowing down considerably here in the seventh. Ball three. We'll see if Tony does something with the runner now with one out. I say you're up by two. Why not? Well, especially when you got somebody like Pujols. A lot of double plays, huh? Yeah, the double plays. 
showing the ability pretty much for the most part to make contact. Uh, so hopefully Polanco with that good instincts can get a good jump and be running on the pitch. Hopefully we can jog home circling the base. Three, two, one out, runner goes. Little flare, right center, and it will carry to Abbott, the center fielder. Then he drops it, and Polanco's going to third. Now both runners are caught by the bag. And Pujols, they never tagged him. Save at first. And Polanco goes to third. How about that? And we're going to have a discussion from Mr. Perez. You know, Polanco was in an awkward position because he did such good job of base running. A lot of people would have been, you know, he, he pulled up short of second base. He's, he's explaining to Okendo, but, you know, he saw the catch and then the drop. So, I mean, he was short of second base. Then he rounds the bag. He started to go to third, and Pujols didn't stay with him. And there you see the missed tag right there. It says he didn't tag, and Polanco. See, right here, he, he located the ball. He sees it's being caught. And now he started to go back to first. Then he started to go over to third. He picked up his third base coach. I think he held him up there. The umpires, let's watch the umpire. The, the first base umpire goes out to check out the outfield play. So he's right there so there's no umpire at first base when you can make this throw back as gonzalez tries to running back he there's no umpire that's really there but chris guccione was probably only 30 or 40 feet away yeah. and appeared to have a pretty good look now yeah. that's mark carlson the first base who's the first base umpire you know they could give two errors on that play one to abbott for dropping the ball which they have and they could give castillo an error for missing the tag enabling not only Pujols back to first, but another base for Polanco. So anyway, we'll call it an E8, and that's it until we hear otherwise. Well, let's put it this way. Capitalize on it now. Right. First and third, one out. Edmonds against the left-hander, and it's ball two. That was the first error by Abbott in limited play this year. We talked about the Marlins defensively. That's only their 66th error of the year. Only the Phillies and the Diamondbacks have made fewer errors in the National League. Well, there's a guy out there who doesn't play a whole lot this year at the Major League level because Preston Wilson has been out there, but now he's on the DL. 2-0 to Edmonds. Ball three. Right-hander Paquette on deck, and the Marlins have their bullpen ready, Al. Ricky Bonus, right-hander out of their bullpen. Well, Edmonds has shown a very good batting eye. He's walked three times tonight. Came around to score on the two holes home run in the second. How about no, the two car? On the, on the, uh, I'm sorry. Marrero? Marrero. It's RBI. How about the two cardinal batted balls in this inning? Polanco's little fly ball falls right in front of Millar, bounces up into his glove. And then the one by Pujols, which should have been a routine play by Jeff Abbott. There's Millar, who couldn't quite get there on the Polanco hit. And then Abbott, who was there, and simply closed his glove too soon on the fly by Pujols. Three balls and a strike to Edmonds. Ground ball foul behind Dave McKay outside first. That was a good example of Edmonds, because of his shoulder, trying to cheat on a pitch. You know, he, he almost got a swing like it's a, like a swinging gate. He knows he's going to get a fastball. He's guessing fastball. You see how he opens up the front side, flies open? That's what he has to do because of the injured shoulder to try to cheat on a fastball. It's one of those nights. There's a full moon out there. There's a pennant race. And the Cardinals are on the verge of getting back in it. Edmonds, fly ball left field. That will do the job to score Polanco. Caught by Millar, throw to second, three nothing Cardinals, and that is huge. Now, no matter what happens, it takes at least two base runners to get the tying run to the plate for the Marlins. He's mad because he wants more than just the sacrifice fly, but a third run, an extra insurance run, 
with only six outs to get is big. That is big. Jim Edmonds, 56th RBI. He's uh, got a, kind of a weird perfect night with three walks and a sacrifice fly. Dave, Marlins will make a double switch here, huh? Dave Bird is going to come in, play third base, and bat ninth, which will lead off him in the eighth. And there's Ricky Bonus. Ricky Bonus, a longtime American League guy, most of the time with Milwaukee when they were still in the AL. Did you see him originally with San Diego? I think you are correct, sir. So the Cardinals pick up an unearned run here in the seventh. There's a chance for more. Three nothing will bring you back to Bush in a minute. Well, Albert Pujols has certainly been a factor in this thing tonight with a home run, a fly ball that was dropped, and then a very, very interesting running play between first and second. Did he get him, Al? Well, it looks like he misses him there. As Gonzalez tried to chase him, Polanco went to third. You look from this angle, does it appear? And there it looks like he kind of got, he tags him, but I think. Uh, I like the first looked, angle better. Yeah, the first angle was better, <laughs> and if you think about the second angle, it looked like he tagged him in the middle of the back, which we know the tag was applied closer to the hip. So either way, Ricky Bonus will come into this game, his 41st appearance. Three wins and six decisions, 3.27 ERA, opponents are batting 270 against the veteran. 41 and a third innings, 43 hits, no home runs allowed, and 19 walks and 25 strikeouts. He did break in with the Padres back in 91 in a bunch of years with Milwaukee. There's a little ground ball out to short from Paquette. And over to first is Gonzalez and retiring the first pitch swinging Craig Paquette. Cardinals get an unearned run in the seventh. We go to the eighth. Bullpen's been good. Woody Williams was great. Albert's been good. Three nothing Cardinals. This portion of Cardinal baseball on WB11 is brought to you by Bank of America. We find financial solutions that fit you. And by Dom's Tire and Auto Centers for tires and complete auto service. All you need is Dobbs. Well, it's cooled off, but not a whole lot. 90 degrees at game time, two hours and 37 minutes ago. And we go to the top of the eighth inning. Cardinals on top, 3-0. David Berg, who came into play third base, will be the leadoff guy on the double switch. So if you're keeping score, pitcher is batting in the number eight hole for the Marlins. Dave Berg, one of their spare infielders, a 233 batter with occasional power, three home runs. A homegrown Marlin taken in the 38th round of the draft eight years ago. The 1 0 pitch, that's upstairs. 93 sounds like it should be the expansion draft, but it wasn't. The expansion draft was in 92. The Marlins and the Rockies made their pick. I'm trying to think who the Marlins' first pick was back in '92. Do you remember? Nope. I happen to remember who the Rockies was because I was a reporter at that event in Denver. That is, uh, kind of a good trivia question. About the way he lays the bat on his shoulder. Yeah. You know, I mean, you always talk about being quick to the to the zone, the hitting zone, and. When you lay the bat on your shoulder, it just seems like your swing's got to be long. <clears throat> Remember David Need? Yep. He was the Colorado Rockies' first pick in the expansion draft. A lot of people thought they might take Pete Smith, who was with the Braves at that time. You know who they took? Is it Nigel Wilson? Ah, the outfielder. Yeah. yeah. I think it, and he was with the Toronto organization. Toronto organization. A drive to right, unable to get over there is J.D. Drew, and a base hit for Dave Burke. Yeah. Berg had two hits in yesterday's doubleheader. And, you know, when you talk about somebody laying the bat there, and look where he strides towards the plate. It just tells you that he doesn't like the ball inside. He wants the ball away. He got it away. And he pushed him away, and that's what you did him a favor. This is why that run in the seventh is so big now, because the Marlins have to get another base runner in these last two innings to even think about the tying run. 
But at the plate, the dangerous Luis Castillo, who singled last time up. Up and away from Luther Heckman, and the Cardinal bullpen is about to get busy. Looks like Steck Schulte's moving around out there. How about Jim Edmonds? Playing way over toward left center. That's probably 50 feet toward left center field. So that indicates the Cardinals will work this left-handed batter away. But Luther's first two pitches nowhere near, and that'll earn a visit from Dave Duncan. Now, this is one of those situations where all of a sudden you want him to pitch as effectively as he did the last inning. So Speck Schulte will kind of bear witness what's going on. No, he's got a little bit of time, but he should heat up pretty quickly. And you don't want to see a pitching pattern change. He did a great job coming in with two men on and retiring three straight batters in the seventh inning. But here he's falling into trouble in the eighth. There's that four run seventh we told you about. Astros beat Montreal 4 1. So they're only two and a half back of the Cubs who lost this afternoon at Dodger Stadium. Thank you, Doug Stanton, for that quick NL Central update. And there's a good strike by Hackman, two and one. He's got good movement on that fastball. Looks like a lot of left-handers give up on that pitch, and then it moves out over the plate, and the count goes 2-1. Well, Castillo's the kind of guy that he's going to work the count deep. Sees an awful lot of pitches per bat and, and hits down on the ball, which he should, because he has no power. Two balls, one strike. Upstairs, ball three. One homer this year for Castillo. in 393 at bats. Leads the majors now with 38 infield hits and 10 since the All-Star break. And his game is small ball. 3-1. No, sir. Ball four. And that quickly the tying run to the plate here in the eighth. Hackman with his first walk. Right-handed hitting Alex Gonzalez stepping in. Steck Schulte should be just about ready. Tony's at the bottom of the stairway of the Cardinal dugout. Raises his right hand to the bullpen to get the sign. And usually when Tony does that, that means he gets the sign that either the pitcher's ready or maybe he needs a few more. It's the latter. So that's why Marrero walks out to visit with Hackman. Yeah, Eli was ordered from the bench to go out and talk, stall a little bit for Steck Schulte to get loose. Now that they've got the confirmation from the bullpen, see, Tony looked out there. The Steck Schulte wasn't quite ready, so he told Eli to go out and talk. And during this little time, Steck Schulte is now ready, so we're going to be part of a double switch. Paquette is making his way off the field. So he made the final out, and that's where the change will be. And Renteria will go to play shortstop. Blanco will move over to third, and Steck Schulte will come in to pitch. Cardinal three run lead in jeopardy. Hackman, not a bad job, but a base hit and a walk here in the eighth. Alex Gonzalez against Gene Steckschulte in a minute. Edgar Renteria will bat ninth, as Al said, and play short. He'll bat in the bottom of the eighth. Polanco, the versatile one, moves over to third. In a tough situation for Gene Steckschulte. Al in this inning, he inherits the same situation that Luther Hackman inherited in the seventh. Well, we just hope he does the same job because Luther was special. Didn't allow anybody to score. 46 game for Gene at 0-4 record. See his 56 hits and 48 innings. 18 walks, eight home runs is a little alarming. I'll know that he is very, very capable of being a closer in the future, but still a learning the trade in progress, and he can take a big step here tonight. Alex Gonzalez with a big night, two for three with a single and a double. Actually challenges him with a running fastball on the inside corner.
right-hander here, left-hander on deck, and that's why the Cardinals are warming up Steve Klein. There's a breaking ball, low and away. Steckschulte throws one of the hardest breaking balls in the league. That was a 91-mile-an-hour slider. And he's got some down-and-away movement to it, which makes it tough. Sometimes a flat slider can be big-time trouble. And the count goes to one and two now. Cardinals trying to move three games over 500. 13 over 500 at home. And gain a game on the Cubs and be seven out at the end of the night. One ball, two strikes. Low and away, and a tough little play for Eli sliding to his right. And again, that's a 91 mile an hour breaking ball. It actually has a hard sinker, and where he throws, his size and his release point make it very difficult on the right handed batters, but sometimes his control gets him in a little trouble. Got him on a pitch down and away. Nasty breaking stuff from Steckschulte for the strikeout. And that is huge here in the eighth inning. Gene, tight little slider right off the plate, finally gets him to chase. And that's the first out. So that is the biggest one. And you know what? The second out becomes the biggest one. Whatever's next. <laughs> one step at a time, buddy. You I mean, got that right, Al. The, the game is so simple. You know, when you just <laughs> reduce it to simplicity, you know, every cliche you use and everything else, I like your idea. I'm taking a lot of money from it. Ground ball. Pujols to short. Back it comes. Another three, six, three. And John Mabry has grounded into three double plays tonight. Three, six, three is pretty tough, and we've seen it twice in this game tonight. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Cards still lead 3-0. Batters to get three outs, and we go bottom eight. Cardinals lead 3-0. It'll be Marrero, Robinson, and Edgar Renteria batting in the number nine spot. I know John Mabry doesn't uh, feel any better when I tell him that I saw Joe Torre one time hit into four double plays in one game. Well, there's a guy who was a batting champion and an MVP. And here's Eli. He's had a good night, an RBI double and a walk. And he's done a wonderful job behind the plate with Woody Williams, Luther Hackman, and Gene Steck Schulte. Ball one to the Cardinal catcher. Eli has extended his hitting streak to four games. He is six for his last 12. His five. batting average, 290. Look at that, five for nine in the series. Key bonus takes a little bit off and misses low and away 2 0. You know, I came in batting 297 in his 31 starts. Homered last night. Ricky bonus, Ricardo bonus is from Puerto Rico. And that one is in there. Two balls and a strike. 32 year old veteran, six foot, 207. He's been with the Padres, the Braves, the Yankees, Reds, Royals, Baltimore, and the Marlins. And a little tapper. Beyond third, Alice Gonzalez. Tough play. Nice dig by Derek Lee. Pretty good on both ends by the Marlins right there. And let it go quickly because of the speed. So he kind of surrounded the ball. Throws on the run. It's that little sidearm, little body twist to get a little oomph on the ball get it over there and a nice pick at the first base bag by Derek Lee Gary Robinson little chopper right at Gonzalez has to hurry he's got some good hands this guy two quick outs Not the same type of play, but you know the foot speed, and he showed earlier that he knows Kerry Robinson can get down the line, so in on the ball, but surrounding it so he can 
little bit throw on the run and have a little bit of his body uh, and momentum go forward with the throw. And a first at bat tonight for Edgar, who came in to play third on the double switch. Excuse me, short on the double switch last inning, moving Polanco from short to third. Will Stechschulte have a chance for his third save of the year? Who's up? Well, Kevin Millar, right-hander. Why not let him start the night? Yeah. Then you got Derek Lee. Then you have Charles Johnson. Should be Steck Schulte. Edgar swinging very well lately, and he waits on that one and fouls it off to the right. He had a right field idea on that one. Some other ball games moving on tonight. Pirates won at Colorado 6-3. <laughs> and Steve Klein. Well, let's wave to Steve. I'm sure he's looking at us. Well, he was just trying to see if Rich Gould's still here. <laughs> Cincinnati at San Diego. They're scoreless after four. Why does that bring a laugh? Three balls and a strike. Excuse me? I'm just giving the ball a strike count here, buddy. There's J.D. talking to Big Mac. Maybe a little... Uh, student teacher going on <laughs> <laughs> there's ball four our boys adding a little punctuation to that last graphic and Edgar's the board with two outs here in the eighth and Edgar's been that batting average has really been on the climb for him yes sir what's your Phil Rizzuto score not late in the game Phil Rizzuto well Phil He'd be on the GW Bridge on his way back over to Jersey by now in a Yankee game. I think my favorite Rizzuto story, though, one night Bill White, the great ex-Cardinal who was a Yankee broadcaster, looked at Scooter's scorecard. He said, Scooter, what does that mean? For one batter, you have WW. And Scooter says, wasn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> he was too busy saying hi to everybody in the bowling leagues over in the Oranges, yeah. New Jersey. And George Grand used to, another partner of Scooter, used to say, that don't ever let him get up and go to the bathroom in seventh inning because that was his cue to go home. 0-1 <laughs> oh to Fernando Vina, who's had a quiet night. Fernando 0 oh for 4. It's about time for him to break loose with a line drive. Instead, he jacks one to left center, and it moves Kevin Millar back, and he's got it. And the Cardinals are gone. Here we go. Top of the night. Steck shall be throwing the ball well. It appears he will at least start the inning, and the Cardinals are three outs away from gaining a game on the Cubs. Cardinal baseball on WB11 brought to you by Budweiser with a crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. Southwest Airlines celebrating 30 years of freedom, 30 years, one mission, low fares. By AutoZone, the right part, the right price, and good advice. And by your local St. Louis Chrysler Jeep dealers, the official automotive sponsor of the Cardinals on WB11. Top of the ninth, and a foul ball off the bat of Kevin Millar. Cardinals trying to make it two out of three. With game for the series coming up tomorrow. A great opportunity stands in front of the cards here to gain a game on the Cubs. Look out, up and in. Millar acting like it hit him on his it hand. Did. And that's the last thing the Cardinals wanted to see leading off the night. Boy, lately the Cardinals have made things interesting by hitting batters and starting rallies or sustaining rallies in the ninth inning. Trying to go up and in and starts to come around and nicks him on the hand. is on there. Remember they got Cliff Floyd. He is able to pinch hit. But they are a little bit reluctant to do so. But maybe if it have a chance to win a game they need at least one more base run. Here's Derek Lee. And they have a couple of guys who could always pinch run for Floyd if they had to. Chad Matola is an outfielder who's got some speed. Yeah I mean but the way this game has gone they've used very few players only one off the bench. So they would have that option. And Stechschulte blowing that thing by Derek Lee. One ball and one strike on a hard slider, 84 miles an hour. 
All the baseball's over except this one and the scoreless game with the Reds at San Diego in the fifth. 1-1 one, one pitch. A real jam job at a high tight fastball. Cliff Floyd is swinging a bat in their dugout. And Steve Klein is throwing behind Steck Schulte in the Cardinals bullpen. Well, some baseball yet to be considered tonight. But maybe get a double play off the bat of Derek Lee and it doesn't mean much. Got him on a swing and a miss. And Stechel, he's got a nasty breaking pitch going tonight. Dropped down a little bit sidearm, and that was something else. Our play of the game from Budweiser, the crisp, clean, refreshing taste. You'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. And now we go back to the seventh inning on a ball hit by Jeff Abbott. And there you see the over-the-shoulder catch. A couple guys on base. And very nice running catch over the shoulder, but they were sending rank in his top ten as a <laughs> cardinal. Yeah, that's becoming the routine, isn't it? Charles Johnson pulling off that one. Strike one to the Marlin catcher, who's one for three with a double. Cardinals have turned to trifecta of double plays tonight. Actually, so confident with that breaking ball. Andy Mario nearly missed with it. One ball, one strike. Hermanson tomorrow against Ryan Dempster. We're on the air at 1 o'clock. The 1-1 pitch. Got him away. 93, says the gun. Was that a breaking ball? Are you kidding me? It's not. You could picture a cut fastball maybe going that fast. One and two, the count to Johnson. The way he finishes it off. A little chopper down to first. Fair ball. Two outs. Pujols knew if he could charge it and get it before it went foul. That's an out. Millard down to second base. And the Cardinals are one out away from gaining a game on Chicago. Schulte one out away from picking up his third save. Drops down, and the ball was in the middle of the plate, but pulled right off it. And Johnson hits a run off the end of the bat. They say it stays fair. You see him pick it up, and I think that was a real good call. Allow Millard to go down to second. If you're a pitcher in this situation, you obviously you want to end it right here. But another bit of your incentive is the combined shutout. Up and in, ball one. Hey, these umpires have had an interesting night tonight. Mark Carlson has, to, has had to hustle. You know what? They've all made the calls. Look at him hustling right here, trying to set himself to get a good look at it. You don't want to be moving and your eyes bouncing. But they've all have had uh, good calls. And a tapper foul. Next Schulte looks unhittable tonight. He's faced five batters, one to strike out, a double play, the only man to reach hit by a pitch, another strikeout, and another little ground ball. So he has really been overpowering and overmatching Florida batters so far. Two outs in the ninth. Cardinals lead 3-0, looking for their sixth shutout of the year. That's way outside, ball two. If this one gets completed. That'll be four combined shutouts of those six. The only complete game shutouts by Cardinal pitching this year. One by Kyle. One by Matt Morris, the guys you would expect. There's a 2-1 pitch low. And now the specter of Cliff Floyd, if Abbott walks in the on-deck circle, possibly representing the tying run. Yeah, that just, this is what drives managers crazy, see? Don't make these decisions for him. Plus, also, you're out of the game. You Here's a guy. yourself out of the game if this guy gets on. There's a strike. Three two now. You can challenge Abbott, who's only played six games this year. No homers, two RBIs. A crowd of 42,312 tonight. And they are ready for this thing to be over after three hours and four minutes.
Check, she'll be ready for the 3-2 pitch. And a pop-up. That should do it. Who wants it? It'll be Polanco or Pujols. Albert takes it. And the game is over. A very well-pitched game tonight, Al. The Cardinals didn't get a lot of hitting, but the pitching was so good, they didn't need a whole bunch. Well, this, once again, pitching dictates how the game's going to go. Woody Williams in his Cardinal debut was outstanding. And don't forget about the big inning, the three outs that Hackman got, followed up by Steck Schulte's work here. But this is, once again, this ball club starting to peak at the right time. They've dug themselves a hole, but there still is time to pull it out. Cardinals win it 3 nothing. their sixth shutout of the year. Save number three for sexuality. We've got more from Bush Stadium in a moment. The Cardinals great pitching. Woody Williams, wonderful in his Cardinal debut with six plus innings of shutout ball. Albert Pujols, a big home run. Al Raboski early, a solo. This would be the only run the Cardinals would need. Uh, that's what it is, and it's his 14th game-winning RBI that leaves the ball club. What, 453 feet on his 26th home run of the year? You know, Polanco had been tied with Pujols for his 13th uh, game hitting streak. Now it's 14. Missed play right here. A pop-up falls in between, and that's always a good sign, too. So the Cardinals come up big tonight. Woody Williams into the seventh. Seven hits, not a walk and five strikeouts, couple of double play balls, and Al Roboski, you couldn't ask for anything more than what he gave the Cardinals in that debut tonight. Well, really watching him, you saw him do a lot of little things. He pitched on both sides of the plate, he changed speeds very well, and he is a little bit creative. When he needed to get a, a double play, he got one, and a tough night for Mabry again. He hit some three double plays two times. It was the 3-6-3. Uh, Woody got a base hit wearing the Cardinal uniform. He said that was on a hit and run. <laughs> it was kind of interesting, but he did his part of it. And the Cardinals get a lot of different things on the positive side tonight. Three hours and four minutes, and the Cardinals beat the Marlins 3-0. Final words in a moment. 